It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley are here. We're going to talk about Microsoft's quarterly report. It comes out, as always, right in the middle of the show. Also, lots of Windows news, Windows 8 news, RT. And yes, Paul has an inside look at Windows Surface Pro. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 296, recorded January 24th, 2013. Microsoft's secret power broker. Windows Weekly is brought to you by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Visit ShareFile.com, click the radio microphone, and enter Windows. And by Audible.com. To download the audiobook of your choice free, visit Audible.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that brings you the latest Windows news from the beautiful downtown Redmond, Washington. And here they are, the stars of our show, as far away as they could possibly get from Redmond. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Therott of the Super Site for Windows, winsupersite.com. You know, if you're studying a disease, you don't want to be right where the outbreak is. <laughs> They're over in Atlanta at the CDC right now. Yeah. Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com. Great to see you guys. Great to see you, too. Yes, and... Uh, I had no trouble whatsoever logging into SkyDrive. I've solved my SkyDrive problems. I am a happy... You know, I have to say, I, uh, I was reviewing an Acer Windows 8 machine mm -hmm. and uh, logged into, you know, my Microsoft account. And it's great because, I, you know, everything pre-pop, you know, populates. And, and it, it's the same experience you get now with a Google phone or an, uh, an iPhone where you've already got everything set up and the new one just sucks it down. But it's nice. I've never seen that before on a computer. It's a really nice feature, I think. This is a, a stunningly different reaction than you had last week to Microsoft technology. Oh, I still hate Windows 8. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> In fact, the more no, I use it... Don't get me wrong either. I'm happy to hear it. I, <laughs> the more I use it, the more baffled I am. For a, I'll you know, give you an example. I started a game that came with, a, you know, some crapware game that came with the Acer, mm -hmm. uh, some bathtub ducky thing. And I'm playing it. And it's full screen. You know, it's a yeah. Metro app. So I, I know how to get out of Metro apps. You press the Windows key or you swipe out of it. So I swipe out of it and I start doing something else. And the music from the game, it's quiet. And all of a sudden, the music from the game starts playing loudly. You want to know why that's ironic? Why? I get a lot of email from people that start music playing the Xbox music app and then want to go do something play. else. And when they do, the music stops. <laughs> well, my, my point exactly. It's unpredictable. And I guess yeah. there is a way to quit Metro apps, but I didn't. I couldn't figure I it out. I just wrote a tip about that, Leo. It's though you shouldn't have to tip people. I just so did, somebody said, a little obviously system. Windows 8 is so excellent because you had to write a tip telling them how to stop, <laughs> how to you quit know, a shut program. down the apps. But in my defense, it was the 60th yeah. tip that I wrote, so it wasn't like near the top no. of the list. Yeah, yeah. You swipe down from the top but, of the screen, right? Yeah, yeah. I did that. Nothing happened. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't remember how I got to stop. I think I turned the sound off. <laughs> Just shut it off. You know? <laughs> shut it off. Shut it down. Um, but anyway, uh, n I'm not here to complain. I'm here to listen to you complain. Okay. <laughs> I think that, um, if I'm not mistaken, Acer picked up Packard Bell's PC business. Oh, wow. But that company went out of business. Does that sound right? Could be. I, you know, Packard Bell was an imaginary company anyway. They bought, well, it was sure. a Taiwanese company that bought the name of the old radio company. And I think made there was some really... like neck investment in there, oh. NEC. And, and then, they were uh, crappy computers. <clears throat> yes, they were. Now, Acer. Or was that E-Machine? Maybe I'm thinking of E-Machines. Uh, E-Machines was bought e by Gateway. E-Machines was bought by Gateway. Another yeah, but Gateway is, are they still around? No, I guess they are still around. Oh, yeah. yeah. Acer are bought Gateway. Somebody? Are they yeah. owned by somebody? Acer. Hey, sir, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, Microsoft's about to buy Dell, so it's just going to all... <laughs> whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. I have a hard time telling the crap apart. <laughs> <laughs> Acer <laughs> makes... A, actually, it's interesting, because Acer does make a beautiful Ultrabook. It's kind of white, 
pearl. Oh, by the way, I should, I should be clear. I, I, I was talking about e-machines and Packer Bell. I actually think Acer makes nice computers. Yeah, this one was kind of the the, uh, the Aspire M was kind of middle of the road. It's an eight hundred dollar computer, but it worked. Yeah. You know, and it was a touch yeah. screen. I think everything should be touch screen nowadays. Um, anyway, but that's not what we're here for. Again, <laughs> you might wonder what the hell are we here for? We're here <laughs> for a fight. I was literally just wondering. We're here for a battle. It's the battle to the finish between Surface RT and Surface Pro. I did it wrong. No, I, did, I did it right. No, I got it wrong this way. <laughs> I can't do it right because I'm too old. <laughs> Where is he facing? Wait a minute. Let me get out the Vuvuzela. Round one. <laughs> Mary Jo would kill me in a fight because she can probably out drink me. And eventually I would just <laughs> I fall asleep. But she, <laughs> she has been building up her drinking muscles. I have. You don't want to mess with Mary Jane Foley. She is, uh, she's a master drinker now. <laughs> I had to tell a guy in basketball last night he couldn't laugh when I tried to play defense. <laughs> <laughs> this is allowed. a real world problem when you're in your late 40s. You're not allowed to laugh. <laughs> like, you can you. silently mock me, but laughing out loud, not appreciated. So, uh, February, February 9th. Is. is the day we get, uh, I keep showing, I mean to show you, is the day we get our uh, Windows uh, 8 Pro Surfaces, Surfi, mm -hmm. Surface Eye. Um, have you, you haven't played with one yet. Uh, nobody? No. Nobody? Bueller? <laughs> Anybody? No. Uh, Let's, no. No. Okay. That's okay. You want to say anything about it? <laughs> you, Mary Jo, you believe in the tablet. Yeah, this is so. This is how we we stumbled onto the idea for this episode this week because uh, I wrote a post on my site defending the Surface RT and saying even though I know a lot of people who are really excited about the Surface Pro and they can't wait to get the Surface Pro to give their RTs away or to trade up or whatever, I have no interest. Or, or intention to do that. And the reason is, for me, the Surface RT is working out just fine. Um, you know, I, I talked about it being more of a companion device. It's not a replacement for my PC, but it really has worked out to do everything that I used to do with my iPad. And I actually donated my iPad at the end of last year to um, some of the people working to help the Hurricane Sandy victims. So I don't even have my iPad anymore. Um, but I do every, every, basically everything I used to do on my iPad, I do on the Surface RT. And so I don't really feel a need for the Pro because I think the Pro isn't really even a tablet, even though Microsoft calls it a hybrid PC tablet. It's, it's actually a PC, but it's not the kind of PC I want. Um, I want a, if I'm going to buy a new Windows 8 PC, I want it to have really excellent battery life. And this is supposedly going to have somewhere uh, around four to five hours of battery life. So it's just not it's like acceptable to me. It's like a regular yeah. laptop. Even worse than my regular laptop, which yeah. is an Asus. I mean, when I when I bought this laptop new, it was getting like nine to 10 wow. hours of battery life. Wow. It's now getting about four. So, no. And what are you getting on your Surface RT? Well, um, funny you ask, because I just posted about this today too. So, um I'm getting about eight to nine hours of battery life on it. Yeah. But what's very puzzling to me is I see a lot of people saying when they're not using the Surface RT and it's in um, uh, like sleep mode or hibernate mode, they're not really consuming a lot of the battery. But mine is. So every time I shut mine down and then come back to it, the battery is like eaten away. And I can't it's really that figure out why that's happening. Yeah, it's that tub, <laughs> that, that game. tub game, rubber right. ducky game. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Ducky. Wordament. <laughs> Wordament won't <laughs> stop. <laughs> Eight to nine is what I get as well. That's. I mean, yeah. that's what you want with a tablet. It's good. Yeah, and you know, so then you don't have to carry your cord with you if you go out. Take it with you. Put it in your purse or purse if you're Paul. Um, so yeah. Sorry. I, I think <laughs> it's what just happened there. Device. She's already. See what she just did? She just threw down right in the middle of a sentence. I yeah. said Merce. She's, you she's already you accusing said. you of <laughs> some sort of strange effeminacy, Paul. I, I, <laughs> that is undeserved. Undeserved because you're more manly than most men. You certainly, you. you certainly make me just shrivel up. <laughs> wow. <So. laughs> like a slug in the sun. Wow. <laughs> so so um, I think everything Mary Jo just said makes a lot of sense, Paul. Uh, Except that it's wrong. Okay. Why? 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 <laughs>
this. You know, she's right. I mean, I, I, it's funny because the two devices are nearly identical from a form factor perspective. They both plug into the same keyboard covers. You know, they use a lot of the same accessories. They look almost exactly the same. Um, but she is right that the, the Surface Pro is a PC, whereas the Surface RT is more of a companion device, like an iPad, you know. And um, I, But I think that that's the Surface Pro's biggest advantage. You know, the problem, of course, is that it's not going to get the eight to nine hours of battery life that you see with the Surface RT. It's going to get five hours of battery life. So it's not perfect. It's not, you know, it, it, if they could get this device to the point where it can get that kind of battery life, suddenly what you have is that, kind of Nirvana device where it does everything that you want all in one device, which would be kind of cool. Um, unfortunately, because of the limitations of the battery life, it doesn't quite get there. But on the other hand, it runs Photoshop, it runs iTunes, you know, it runs all those apps that everyone wants to run. And maybe as important, it runs such things as Chrome with browser plugins. It runs all of the drivers for all of the devices that everyone is using today. Like it actually works with everything. And it's not so, you know, a lot of people look at Surface RT, and I think Mary Jo might make this argument that, you know, it's it's that nice break with the past, which is fine. But I think you can achieve it with a Surface Pro and still have those few things you do need to get work done day to day now. You know, Mary Jo's computing requirements are pretty small. She uses Notepad to write, which is pretty incredible. But uh, this thing runs. <laughs> that's well, a nice, she, that's that's, a nice that's way fine. to put it's it. Great. It's incredible. He's, he's being diplomatic. <laughs> the yeah, original meaning uh, it's of fascinating it's hard to, me, to like, believe. <laughs> like a, a weird lemming type animal in a zoo that I've never seen before. But it, it looks familiar, but I don't quite get it. Yeah. You know. But no, I, I uh, you know, it, I, I think that it's important because we're not in. We don't live in the future. We live now, and there's the, just this stuff that I want to run now that I can't on Surface RT. I mean, you know, at some point we're going to cross over that divide. I just, I, I was thinking, are there apps I'm missing um, that I really can't live without? When 32 apps that I absolutely am dying because I don't have them on my Surface RT? The answer is no. There's None. nothing. None. Zero. The only That's one awesome. I'd say I would love to see is Outlook. Um, because I really think the mail client is pretty horrible on the Surface RT. Um, and I'd love to have the Zoom PC software back on um, the Surface as well because I don't think Xbox Music is very good at this point. Um, I can but that. other than those two, no. Oh, both of those run on Surface Pro? Just a thought. They do. I, I will say one of the things that amazed me uh, the most about the article that you wrote was that you said it was, it's two, these two things sound amazingly contradictory, but um, obviously they're, they're true, which is that you don't miss any legacy apps, which you just said. But the other bit that was in the article was you also don't really care for any Metro apps, that there are no killer gotta have it Metro apps, right? So it's kind of a strange right. thing. It suggests that you can exist with what's on it for the most part. You know, that what it comes with is basically what you need. Yep. And that's basically uh, Office. Yeah, Office. Not even Office. And, I um, she uses Office. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't really use Office that much. Um, I... I mostly am the few apps that I like that are on there. Um, what do I use that like, I really like? It's like somebody who bought Windows 98 and only used the accessories. It is. Yeah. It's kind of like that. It <laughs> that really one is. Was nice um, yeah, it, that one came with real player and that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I, I also did point out in the article that I think the reason I'm okay with how this is working out is even when I do try some of the apps, like say the New York Times app, that, that they have a Metro style app. Um, yeah. I try that, and then I contrast it with actually just using the website of the New York Times. The website's better to me, much better. Um, yep. So I don't really – I, I my, the because way my screen faster, looks right now is – Because of it's, how it's, it's laid faster, out? It's faster, easier to navigate. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just I just find it way um, – it makes more sense to me for some reason, and it and it works better for me. It works good. It so, works good in the browser with touch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it does. Um, even with touch, yeah, because you can make the page bigger and use it with touch. So I, what my screen has ended up looking like is I have a few Metro-style apps, and then I have a ton of websites pinned to my screen. That's what my yep. screen looks like. So I do the same thing, by the way. And I suspect, I mean, look at this is what Google's Chromebook is kind of I know. aimed at. It's, I suspect that right. this is kind well, of a, a modern Chromebook computing Chromebook has experience. the same problem as RT, though, which is... That for those times when you do need that thing that isn't available, it's just it's just not there. There's no possibility of it happening. Right. You know, and I I find that to be too confining. You know, it, obviously Chromebooks are pretty cheap. You can get one for two hundred and fifty dollars. It's amazing. But I mean, honestly, a very low end Windows 8 laptop 
with Chrome, you know, would be way better than a Chromebook, you know, because you could it, everything works offline and you have that opportunity to download free or buy desktop applications, not to mention the Metro stuff that can go far beyond what's available just in the browser. Well, I think that that's, um, uh, you probably could say that, well, maybe that says more about you, Mary Jo, than it says about the it hardware. Does. Well, it does. You know, it does. And, you know, I, I'm not a power user. Yeah, even it's a though particular kind I, of user. I am a very particular kind of user. I'm like more of an information worker, typical type user. And so, you know, if for as that kind of a person, somebody who works with words and manipulates numbers on a spreadsheet, does a little PowerPoint, you could use Windows RT and a Surface RT. I mean, there's, it's not a stretch to say you could use that and not need a lot of the Win32 apps that people are counting on with the Surface Pro. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's the difference between us yeah. and the choices is because I tend to be a little bit more toward the power user end of the spectrum, and, and I do have some high-end apps that I need to run. You know, Visual Studio is installed on my desktop computer, um, Adobe Photoshop, you know, things like that. So I still need stuff like that. And, you know, again, there'll be a transition. I mean, Windows RT is going to get more powerful. The Metro apps are going to get better, and there'll be more of them. And uh, these things will all evolve. And then, you know, a year from now, this discussion might be very different. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the same. It doesn't. That's not a Surface conversation or even an RT conversation. That's a conversation about how people use computers. And there certainly were people who could use, you know, as I said, Windows 98 that way and say, hey, it comes <laughs> with everything I need. <laughs> and it didn't even come with Office. Yeah. Now, I mean, when you bundle Office in. Sure. Well, I think yeah. uh, bundling Office and RT was smart because it puts it over oh, the yeah. top. Oh, yeah. It, does, it puts it over the top. That's exactly right. It makes it a very good deal for people yeah. who, who need Office. You have to think that a, a huge percentage of the people that bought that thing couldn't have or wouldn't have if Office wasn't on there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Some fight. You guys promised me more than you. I thought <laughs> I know, you guys. I of, thought be fisty cuffs. It was kind I of. I don't lame. like disagreeing yeah. with Mary Jo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we actually. It, it's funny. We mostly do agree on this. I think. Um, I just. It's I how just you're going to really, use it. I mean, it's like saying. I don't see the use case for Surface Pro for somebody who is like me. But right. I agree. If you need Visual Studio or Photoshop or something like that, of course. I mean. But again, then then I think you come into the um, evaluation where you say, do I really want a Surface Pro or do I want some other Windows 8 laptop? Because well, what's your advantage of Surface Pro? I would Pro? submit that the, re that the real thing is if you want a desktop computer, you should get a Windows 7 machine. And if you want a tablet, you should get Windows RT and that there really isn't a role for I don't know. You know, I, I, this is true. This is going to sound a little contrived, but I've. I've got a friend uh, who asked me the other day, he wants to buy some kind of a Windows 8 tablet, and he understands that there are these tablets that you can plug and unplug the keyboard from. And I, and I kind of probed him a little bit on what exactly it was he was looking for. Do you, do you in fact, want a tablet where you can remove that tablet, use it as a tablet, or do you want a, a laptop that has touch just on the screen, but the screen never comes off? And he said, no, no, I absolutely want the tablet. Because sometimes what I want to do is be commuting or on a plane and I want to watch a movie or play a game, but I want to clip it into ah, something and right. be able to work on it too. And he doesn't and want I a convertible. He wants something that's just kind of rip off the keyboard. Yeah, like, and I, I said, you might want to look at the Surface Pro, you know. Um, he didn't want to, he, you know, he's, he's not really into the computer industry, but he, he sort of had this notion that Surface RT was, um, I don't want to say the toy version, but, you know, kind of a constrained version. He, he somehow knew that there was something wrong with that. He didn't want that. And uh, yeah, I said, you know, the new one's coming out, and you should you should look at that. That might maybe that is the machine. And then he said, actually, the other interesting thing he said, he said, I don't want it to cost like two thousand dollars. And I said, no, it's going to be eleven hundred bucks roughly when you factor in the keyboard. He's like, okay, perfect, that's that's fine. So you know, I, I, some some regular human being. I mean, he knows what I do, obviously, but he's not into computers, into the computer industry, and he. He had arrived on his on his own. This was the first time we ever talked about it. That this was the kind of thing he wanted, you know. And I, I think there is some benefit to that hybrid device functionality. Can I ask a stupid? Do you really thing? think though? Are you going to use your Surface Pro without the keyboard ever? No. Ever, ever, ever? No, ever. I, probably not. No. In fact, I was just thinking about that. In other words, um, I'm so someday soon I will go on a trip, and assuming I have a Surface Pro by that point. 
am I going to travel just with that one device? And the answer is no, because of the battery life. If this thing got eight to 10 hours of battery life, the answer yeah. might be yes, you know? But because it's not, so, I mean, so, you know, maybe I bring a Surface Pro and a Surface RT. I mean, it, really? that, that's in, that's like in wacko land, you know? Uh, you know that's something, <laughs> not something, in the sense that, that no, nor, no normal person, I mean, I, because I just, I write about <laughs> Microsoft stuff, so I can have both, but that's not, I would never recommend that to people, nor expect any normal. <laughs> to do that you'd only need one keyboard at least that would be good. i know actually that's that's not bad you know? it use, they both use the same keyboard yeah they're interchangeable yeah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> that's it there's uh, a selling point i'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm waiting thinking. for that uh security line check-in question where the guy's like all right tell me why you have two of these two tablets <laughs> one keyboard <laughs> yeah. yeah um all right I, I I I I hate to hate to ask this question, and I already asked in the chat room. And I'm being this is why at. we're here. But you're my experts. <laughs> Would you say that if you prefer when if you don't like Metro, and you want to use Windows 8 desktop, would you say it's superior to Windows 7 desktop? Actually, I I do find that it is. In what ways? So, you could list through the features that are present in Windows 8 that are not in Windows 7, pretty quickly. You know, file history, storage spaces, the new task manager, the new version of Explorer, the uh, the far more efficient and performant uh, version, you know, the file copy operations and so forth. I mean, that stuff is all uh, much better than it was in Windows 7. Okay. But honestly, just in, in using it, it's sometimes it's the simplest thing in the world. And a lot of people may disagree with this, but I happen to find that the new opaque Windows style of the Explorer windows and all the, the application the lack, windows. The lack of the uh, glass, arrow glass. Yeah. I re you know, uh, be because I had used a, a Mac years and years ago, and I've always had Macs in the house, so I, I have an understanding of how they compare it to Windows. I always have. Um, when Microsoft started talking about and then finally did add these translucency effects to Windows in Windows, um, I knew that they were going to make a mistake that they did make, which was one that Apple made much earlier because they had done it much earlier in Mac OS X, which was to overdo it. You yeah, know, yeah. that this was something that you kind of mature into. If you look at Mac OS X today, which you know because you use it, not a lot of transparency going on no, there anymore. No, yeah. Right, that, that was kind of like a candy coating fun effect thing that we all thought we needed for some reason. Um, and increasingly what you realize over time is that it's just a, it's a gimmick. Well, and you pay you a know, performance penalty as well. And battery life penalty as and well. battery it's life. Which is yeah. more and more important as we move to right. portable devices. Right. So I don't miss Aero, and I prefer the way that Windows 8 looks. And to be honest, day to day, it's the look of the Windows, which, you know, you stare at the screen all day long, uh, combined with the much faster file copy performance, which I use all the time because I'm moving files between, <clears throat> well, around on the computer, but also to other computers. On one my one might say that the, actually the file copying was broken in previous versions of Windows. That's so why one, they have. A, I will absolutely say that. <laughs> that's why they have the RoboCopy uh, command because they, they yes. screwed up. Right. Um, so they fixed. Yeah, something. If, if Microsoft gets Windows right someday, <laughs> all of those utilities we've ever recommended over the years are, are, will all be obsolete. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay. Because I think that's the bottom. That's going to be a selling point for a lot of people because a lot of people are just going to say, look, I'm going to use desktop. I'm a, I'm a Windows user. I'm not a Metro user. And I'm going to use desktop. I, as am I. Yeah. I mean. And uh, so the question would be, am I going to, is it is there is there a compelling reason to go well, to Windows okay, 8 but, desktop? Unfortunately, yeah. So that actually, there's another side of the coin, which is somebody who's calling you um, on the radio, I guess, yes, and saying, who, should I do this upgrade? Yes. And the truth is. Most normal people shouldn't be doing in-place upgrades of Windows. Anyway. Period. When you get a new yeah. computer. Yeah, I've always, you know what, I've been saying that for 10 years. Wait till you get yeah. a new computer. That's, you know, I, and that's honestly, one big difference between the Windows the and Mac The question you're asking is, should I do this? Yeah, don't. You don't know enough to do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a little harsh. That's a good no, point. I, I mean, in other words, like a power user won't ask. might question whether there was yeah. any value in it. But honestly, I think that, you know, any power user worth his salt would have just installed this just to experience it regardless of right. whether he thought it was better or right. not right um a normal person if they have to ask you you know is this something right. should I bother is it safe i'm gonna no, steal that you, from you. if you have to safe. ask you should not do it don't do it <laughs> yeah if you if you that's but, a good that's a good way to put it but you guys remember like i've always been a real naysayer about metro and the start screen and like eh, yeah. i don't know the yeah. only, but I have to say, on my Surface RT, I I go to the desktop once every two weeks, maybe. 
Yeah, because you're like, using a it. tablet, and a tablet I it am, makes right. sense to have a full screen exactly. experience. Yep, but on there my, a, uh, but so I still am using a Windows it. Seven. No, I'm using a Windows Seven PC because, and I'm I have no intention of upgrading this PC. It works perfectly the way it is, and I'm not messing with it. Yeah. So I, I think I represent the doesn't know enough user who is the majority user, right? I agree. The nor it's the norm. That's definitely I agree. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So let's. Yeah, there, I take you know I take the RT tablet out to the couch and you'll have TV on or something. And it, there is something about Metro works well when you're holding it. You know the all the controls are in the right place and. You know, flipping between applications is very natural. You kind of sit down in front of a real computer and do it, and it's, it's right. you know, it works, but it's not. It's just not the same. It's, yeah. Well, it's just it's a it's a bad mismatch. It's an impedance yeah. mismatch between the device you're using and the operating system. I think um, that's why, I, and I and I bemoan it because it's the direction we're moving on the Mac side too to full screen apps and mm -hmm. you know swiping between apps and stuff. And, and on a desktop computer, it's just not into. It's not. It just doesn't make sense, especially on a big screen. You get to a 27-inch display, you don't yeah. want a full-screen app. Yeah. Well, not at the movies here. <laughs> <laughs> so right. you have, uh, it, says on, it says right here, Paul Therott has exclusive details about the Surface Pro. Actually, it says Paul, not Paul Therott. Well, I added but Therott <laughs> to give it more emphasis. Sorry, that's the tie. See, if I, someone said that to me on Twitter, I would have blocked them right there. So <laughs> You blocked me years ago. It's too late. <laughs> no, I have, uh, I guess, off the top of my head, two pieces of information that you won't find anywhere else. And, of course, I need, now I need to look those up because I don't remember one of them off the I'll top of my I'll tell you one head, piece but... of information. I'm very disappointed. I bought this new iMac. Mm -hmm. Boot camp does not work with Windows uh, 8 on this Fusion. I got the Fusion drive. It, it won't let me install uh, Windows. Oh, real? Oh, on the Fusion Drive. Okay. Yeah, because it's that weird hybrid drive. Yeah, and yeah, apparently, yeah. It's, I'm it's sure they'll fix software it. software to work. Yeah, 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 I'm sure they'll fix it. But bad. the software's in the OS, and uh, it's not in Windows. So Microsoft gave some people a preview. Actually, the deal was if you went to CES, you could have gotten this preview. And um, I didn't go to CES, so they didn't give me the preview. But I have uh, sources at Microsoft who have told me things about the surface. So uh, one of the uh, two of the things that people did not find out in their little hands on you can't take any photos uh, experiences with the Surface Pro at CES is the battery life and also the processor. And so uh, the battery life on Surface real world is about five hours, a little bit over five hours compared to eight to nine hours for Surface RT. And it's also the processor, which is important because a lot of people were wondering if Microsoft had waited until this time period so that they could have some next generation processor and that was kind of the hope and unfortunately that's not the case the it's just a standard core i5 um, 30 i gotta read it because i can't remember this off the top of my head but it's a 3317u cpu so in other words this is a, a a core i5 processor that came out in may 2012 it's not new in any way it doesn't have any special properties if you buy a lot of the Windows 8 uh, tablets or laptops that came out at Christmas time, that's the processor that's in them or, or something very close to that. Um, I have a, um, a Samsung ATIB Smart PC Pro 700T that is almost identical from a hardware perspective to the Surface Pro. Slightly different processor, but roughly the same clock speed, same, same family and so forth. And so... These are some of the things that people have been wondering about. Some of the things I can't tell you yet, and one of the other big questions I still get about this thing is whether it has Wi-Di, which is that um, Intel wireless display technology. And that I don't know. The, the chipset apparently does support it, so it's possible, but... Um, really, there are so. actually people using so. Wi-Di. No, they just want it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody's actually using it, Leo. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. Yeah, no, nobody uses. Wi no, I didn't think so. <laughs> no, I, I don't think there's an instance of why die in use outside of Intel's laboratories. <laughs> but I could be wrong. Um, why die is what is it? Kind of like DLNA, where you let you play the screen onto your TV. Yeah, yeah sure. Basically, is that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the theory. If, if anybody ever used it, we because know. you know what we need in the PC world, Leo, is What's another that? way to display stuff on screens that doesn't work for anybody. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, that's what we need. <laughs> It's just so ridiculous. Uh, well, anyway, yes. it doesn't have it, so there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't know if it has it. That one, we I might don't. not. We don't know. Would you get a Surface Pro uh, as opposed to uh, the other stuff that's just about the same? Should Me? I wait? I can tell you that I am going to get a Surface You're Pro. You're going to wait. 
And my and my intention is to. I'm actually going to turn off my desktop for a while, wow. connect this thing through a, a USB 3, wow. you know, hub with the display and all that stuff and connect my keyboard and mouse, everything to it and really use the thing and see if that, you know, I'm going to do it for a while, not for, you know, two days or something. I'm going to just do this and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm concerned about the battery life a little bit. I'm, I'm curious to see whether the fan noise kicks in at any time and is, is obnoxious. I've heard that that's not the case. You know, we'll see. What would you... Okay, but if you... Okay. If, uh, <laughs> but let's say I wanted to buy one. Oh, you want one. But I didn't. But I just wanted the, the best Windows 8 If you want a representative Pro, Windows 8 laptop... No, I want the best. Device. I, want a, I want a great one. I, I This might be it. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. it's interesting. I mean, um, uh, certainly uh, well, they'll sell a lot of them because it's Microsoft, but it should be the best. A, it should be the in other words, the best of us. It's a certain type of device. It one should thing, be the right? standard. If you were going to get an actual like ultrabook, I would say get a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 yeah. Carbon, yeah. you know, touch whatever that's yeah. called. But as far as like an actual Windows 8 device that is a real PC and can clip on the keyboards and all that kind of stuff, I mean, yeah, I think this is it. Mark, Joe Shea, I already have Vickers. borderline high blood pressure. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. buy. I can't buy another Windows 8 device. I think I think if I were gonna. Um, if I were going to give a recommendation to someone, I would say um, wait and see if there's another Surface um, PC tablet that comes out in oh. the next few months. I mean, I don't know oh. if there will be, but um, I, I just wouldn't buy this one because of the battery life, like I right. keep saying. And I feel like um, maybe there a, is going to be one. Trail that, or yeah, Haswell a cell, or, and a cell right. connection. Obviously, in the fall, we, we might have a Haswell version. Right. Maybe that one gets eight or nine hours of battery life. That would be incredible. But yeah. you know, it's it's now, so we'll see. But I mean, Microsoft did announce a sixty-four gigabyte version of the Surface RT without a keyboard, uh, because currently you can only buy it with what? A, is it a touch keyboard? Is that what it is? Uh, not the type uh, keyboard. Type. That's how they do you it. can't buy it with a type. Well, now you can buy one without. So the Surface Pros come with no keyboards. So you can choose the one you want. The pro uh, I think one of the issues they had with the RT was they, they kind of forced you to get one of the right. two keyboards when no, you bought it. No, there was it. a way to get it without. It just made the keyboard more expensive. It made it more expensive. Well, there was no way to get the 64 by uh, 64. Oh, the 64 gig. you couldn't. Uh, yeah, that was right. The you issue. had to get the black keyboard with uh, it, right? Yeah, and I, I cannot confirm this, and I want to be very clear about this. This is from a source I have no idea who it is and do not trust uh, yet, but I have been told that um, there is a a version of the Surface coming in the spring that will have built-in broadband connectivity, uh, wireless, you know, like cellular. Like the ThinkPad so does. The ThinkPad has AT&T 3G. Yeah, uh, 4G now, actually. Oh, yeah, I LTE, think, right? yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't, that one I can't, again. That's pretty cool. I have to say, to have a notebook with built-in uh, 4G. Yeah. It's pretty a lot of people, you know, the, the people who don't think that's a big deal will say, just share your phone connection, you know. It's not yeah. as fast. I keep saying that, but it's it, not it's, as fast. It, and it's not always something everyone has, too. I mean, right. so, sometimes the pay, the nice thing about the LTE add-on is it's pay-as-you-go, essentially. I mean, they make right. it a lot. Month obviously, month. You, can, you can go month to month. Yeah. And I think that that's a, a big benefit because you may go on a trip once a year. That you, That's when you would like to have it. You could buy some crazy amount of data. Uh, whereas you don't want to pay for that every single month for two years straight. So there are advantages to having it on the device. My, my point all along has simply been that it should be an option. You know, this is the strangest thing. I'm looking at the uh, Windows 8, what I thought was the Windows 8 Lenovo ThinkPad at Carbon Ultrabook. Mm -hmm. And I scroll down, it says get it with a professional operating system, and it says Windows 7 professional. So... There are two versions of this. Or I must, probably more I must have two. clicked the wrong button, huh? This is like the non-touch version. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, remember that, you know, Lenovo is one of those companies that supplies Both. Uh, PCs to businesses. Yeah. And it so says that's up to Windows 8 Pro. I, I'm very confused. Yeah. No, you can, I'm sure you could get Windows 8 on both. The point right. is, there's going to be a, there's a touch version of this. But that's what the one that I want. Certain, it's yeah. only going to come with Windows 8, yeah. that one. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> that's a beautiful <laughs> version. Yeah, it's tempting. And it's not, you know, well, I'll have to price it out here, but it doesn't look like it's hugely expensive. You know what else I'm waiting to see um, is the rumored Nokia uh, Windows 8 tablet. Yeah. That could be interesting. Nokia. Do you think they'll announce that at Mobile World Congress if they do it? A lot of people think that. Oh. Which is very Yeah, so we're about a month away from that. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah. Is the Surface Pro 1366 by 768 or is it a higher res? No, it's 1080p. It is 1080. Oh, good. Yep. That's another reason to get it for the higher resolution. I I feel that the the lower resolution of the RT is a little disappointing. Well, uh, I don't do this, but you can plug the RT into an external display of course. and do 1920 by 1080 on that. Of course, but then it's, <laughs> then uh, it's why didn't you buy a computer? Yeah, I, the only thing I'd say to the resolution is that when you compare the Surface RT to the Surface Pro and you're in Metro, it's basically identical because Metro is somewhat resolution independent um, in the sense that the start screens are going to look identical. You're not going to see any difference at all. When you go into the Windows desktop, you're going to see a big difference. And it's actually going to be kind of negative on the larger uh, uh, the larger resolution display because Windows does not scale well. Uh, the Windows desktop does not scale well. So in some ways, to be honest, you know, the, the lower resolution is kind of better on this for this small of a screen, you know, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess you're right. Especially because of that clear type and all that. Actually, the type looks quite good. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to, you know, once we can do a side-by-side, -side, it'll be interesting to see. But I know as far as the start screen goes, they're identical. Yeah. You're not going to see a difference. Maybe inside of apps, you know, there's, depending on the, how the app is laid out, you know, there's the news app that's built in, for example, maybe there's more, you know, text on there by default or, right. or something like that. But it's not going to be a big difference. So the different, I could give you a comparison that right here. Here's a left-right comparison. On the left, Paul at the higher resolution, Mary Jo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At 1366 HD, by 768. Yep. Facial blemishes and all. <laughs> And then and, and um, frozen. She looks, oh, she's gone. <laughs> she looks like a character from a ColecoVision game. There will be, it says, a uh, fix for the app updating issue. What's the app updating issue? I didn't even notice this in the RT. Uh, this one is from Mary Jo. I wish, oh. Maybe we should wait. For that. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. Mary Jo, what, what's going on? Hello. Hello, Mary Jo. <laughs> We're calling her. <laughs> She did get a new modem. Yep. Maybe it just needs to burn in. That's it. That's it. I guess they'll probably edit this out. <laughs> you know, they won't because nobody watches the show anymore. They just put a beginning and an end on it. No, you know, the editors just does, go. Does it yeah. connect faster when you wiggle the window? <laughs> It's like Very a polaroid. Right. Shake it. Just shake it. It'll. It'll. Let's see. We're gonna have a Kickstarter project to get Mary Jo more bandwidth. Says I hate ATM fees. <laughs> well, she is on Skype. She's texting me. Yeah. I'll just tell you what she says. Yeah. Ask her. Ask her. Yeah, Mary Jo. What's this about the <laughs> the app updating issue? Oh. Uh... I don't want to take one of her stories. There we go. Mary Jo. Whatever yes. just happened. Courtesy, like, okay. courtesy Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I said to Leo, just uh, ask me the questions you want to ask. I'll, I'll ask her and then she can type them and I'll tell you what she said. Uh, yeah. I, I did a whole twit that way. <laughs> I yeah. once dictated an article to my editor over the phone driving to the airport. <laughs> John C. Dvorak Skype kept going out, so I just said, "Well, stay on I am, and uh, I'll t I'll I'll read anything you say." Like that. Did, did, did you do it in his voice? Yeah, yeah. Ah, Leo, that'll never work. That's uh, no, no. That, that sounds like the penguin from the Batman TV <laughs> show. <laughs> so, what is the app updating issue you're experiencing in Surface RT, MJ? Yeah, so I'm I'm actually not having this happen, but um, a number of people who applied the last batch of um, fixes that were part of Patch Tuesday, there was a firmware update for Surface RT in there, and there were a bunch of patches. After they applied them, they, they couldn't get Windows Update to work right, and they uh, also reported they would start uh, downloading an app from the store, an app update, and then it would just get stuck in a loop. Um, so some people said just restart and that fixes it, but Microsoft's acknowledging there's a problem. They're not saying from what, what created it exactly, but um, they're doing a patch and it should be out the first week of February to fix this. Next patch Tuesday. Next patch Tuesday, yeah. And uh, weird, <laughs> weird new surface, surface accessories emerging, but no doc. 
<sighs> yeah. Damn you, Microsoft. So they announce, you know, they have the type covers and the touch covers. The touch covers are the flat ones, right? But the, not the actual keys, like the, is that right? I always confuse these two for some reason. Well, assuming that what I just said is true, they released, uh, are releasing three new versions of those. So in the same colors, so it's, you know, red and cyan and I don't know what the other color is, but white maybe. But they have patterns on them, kind of like those Zune originals that they used to put on the Zune devices. Um, so sort of pointless, but I guess if people are into, you know, the fashion accessory look, that they've got that going for them. There's something called the Wedge Mouse Surface Edition. And so it's the same Wedge Mouse that they've had since last fall, but packaged for the Surface. And it doesn't look any different. It's not colored, you know, it's not, I don't know what the... What the, I mean, I have a wedge mouse here. I'm trying to imagine what could be different about it, you know, to make it match a, the surface. And maybe it's slight, colored slightly different or something. I, I, I don't know. But I, there's a, a surface version of the wedge mouse. And so, you know, it's just kind of like we were kind of looking forward to some notion that there'll be like a docking base or something where you could do that thing where you can more elegantly uh, drive a desktop monitor. Uh, but that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, we'd love that. Just so, you know, I get I get home, I put it in the dock, and it's yeah. all ready to go. I mean, I, you know, I, I talked earlier about Nobody makes those gonna... anymore, though, do they really? I mean, I see a few. Actually, yeah. So really? there's a Lenovo tablet. Yeah, I think it's called the ThinkPad that. Tablet yeah. 2 that has a, a really nice base. Yeah. Um, and there are some others. But I, I think this is something Microsoft could do because, frankly, you know, this device plus that kind of a bay, and it has to be seamless. Like, you know, obviously you can plug in a USB cable or something like that, and that's okay. But, uh, you know... Ideally, what this would do is you, you just slip it into the dock. It clicks and you go. And if you, when you want to leave, you pull it out and you take it off and, and it works on the go. And uh, I'd like to see, you know, this is an area where I think Microsoft could do a really nice job of, of innovating. But, you know, so far they have shown no interest in doing, doing at least that part of it. So, yeah, we, like we lost Mary Jo again. Oh, no way. Yeah. So um, I don't uh, I just will just continue. We'll soldier on. With a with a gaping she says hole. that it must be Skype because her connection is good. Okay, <laughs> we'll have a rebooter machine if you're in contact with her. Okay, I can. You want me to tell it to reboot? Yeah. Tippity tip tap tap. I can do that. So if I wanted to buy a Windows machine, no, yes. sorry, say what number? And I use let's let's say I like I like desktop. I don't want Metro. It's possible to just kind of, except for I don't mind the start screen. That's fine. But it, but uh, it's possible for me to just to use it as a desktop computer, like a Windows Seven computer, and not. This really, is I do this every day. Yeah, you and yeah. I are old school. We want it that way. Well, I that's where all my apps are. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, right now, for example, this is not exactly a high intensity multitasking environment, but. I've got the Skype window clipped to one side of the screen. Right. I've got our notes in one note clipped right. to the other side. I want Windows. I a big for screen. I, want to use, yeah. I don't want a little corridor on the left. I want Windows. Yeah, I think of it as a gutter. A gutter. I don't want the gutter. I yeah. want Windows. And so, but but the point being that if that's how you operate, at least still in Windows 8, it may not be in Windows 9. I wouldn't be surprised Actually, to I, see it be I deprecated. I to mention but, uh, they dramatically improved the, the uh, multi-monitor capabilities in Windows 8 I did as hear well. that, yeah. And I so do even like for that. yeah for true power users, yeah. that's a reason enough right I there. I like that. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I bought this. You know, I bought this steampunk laptop. Yeah. Ages ago. I mean, literally, it's almost two years now. And um, the problem is that he buys the laptop and then fabricates, you know, the wooden holder, and he's making stained mm -hmm. glass and stuff. So it's a Windows Seven laptop. Yeah. By the time I get it. <laughs> Windows 9 is out. Yeah, it's going to be really yeah. out of date. So we're switching to a different Skype for uh, Mary Jo? We're going to try it. Well, she's probably rebooting. So we're, we're, She's rebooting, and we're going to try a different machine on our end. And Windows 7 laptops don't reboot in six seconds, so it might take her a few. You know, that's why you need Windows 8. Another good reason, right? Sure. I guess if you're buying a steampunk laptop, complaining that it doesn't have the latest operating system is kind of is, silly. Yeah. It yep. should really have a, a 19th century All you care system. about is that this thing can run Bioshock. <laughs> Ooh, now yeah. we're talking. Now we're talking. I'm looking forward to getting this thing. God, that looks like a keyboard from one of those um, 
uh, early power books. You know it's, the um, yes, with the big metal keys. Look yeah. at these. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Those are like, okay. So those are like printing press. Yeah, it's a lead, letter press lead, key. You know the lead letters. And it has a key that you and it, to unlock the machine. You wind the key. <laughs> It's Captain Nemo's laptop. What though? I bet the palm rest and that thing really work. They're leather, and yeah. they've got big studs on them. Hmm. Mm. They look like just like Freddie Mercury. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it looks like fine, uh, fine uh, horse. It looks tack. like some type of or, thing you'd see on the back of chaps. Or Queen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to uh, to getting this someday. He's you know they're they're ham crafted. Someday, yeah. But I'm telling it you, come I mean Windows 95 on it. It should be DOS. But I presume yeah. that I could upgrade it. You know, maybe I'll just put Linux on it once I get it. You know, I mean, Thanks. really, seriously. Well, I mean, because who cares? <laughs> that looks just... like a parallel port. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> oh, Lord. It'd be fun to bring this into a Best Buy and say, hey, I'm having trouble with my laptop. Can I get some Geek Squad going on this? <laughs> I wonder if I could get somebody to work on I clearly have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm thinking your services are perfect for me. <laughs> Can you fix a wooden laptops too? <laughs> right. I, I find that the varnish color is a little darker than I was yeah. hoping. Is yeah. this a, can you, a can Geek you, Squad can service? You help me with that. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, let's move on. I guess Mary Jo, we're going to get her back. I, we really got to okay. get her a cable modem. I think this is this this sets it. Yeah. This really sets it. Um, it says she's online, so I right, listen. Sean J S in our chat room asks, "What are the multi-monitor improvements in Windows 8? What makes Windows 8 better in a multi-monitor environment?" Oh God, see, I don't even keep track of this stuff. <laughs> it is just take our word for it. It's better. No, no, you don't. Don't take my word for it. It's um. Let me look at it. Well, you know, if you went to something like I don't know the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. I, literally, I am going to the super site for Windows. <laughs> There's because... probably a very detailed article. There is. There's a Windows 8 feature focus, although this is probably from pre-release times. But well, I'm sure it's um, the same. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's a Metro style. Hold on, Mary Jo is pinging me. Okay, she's back. She says she's back. Yeah. So you can call. There's, there's, call there's, for Mary Jo Foley. From any Windows 8 uh, PC, you can hit the Windows key plus P to bring up the new second screen panel, which is kind of a Metro interface. That's you know, uh, that that's something you'll see even on a laptop, even if you don't have anything to connect to. It's just something that shows up. But I think the big deal is that they let you determine where the taskbar is. Uh, if you have multiple screens, uh, whether it's on all of them, whether it's on the right one or the left one and so forth, you can uh, you can't actually set this between reboots, but you can set it on the go to determine which of the screens has Metro on it. So if you want to bring up a Metro interface, you could have three screens, uh, two of them will have the desktop and one will have the metro. You can determine which oh, of those. Oh, that's screens. nice. I like that. Yeah, this stuff like that. It's just um, it's it's you know I don't use multiple monitors, so when I when I have to write something like this, I have to connect another monitor and test stuff. But I don't actually. I just yeah. don't use multiple monitors. But I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tempted. I can't tell you how many times in my life. I seriously, I bet I do this seven or eight times a day, where I search. Google and I type in some phrase. Yeah. And then and I type site, site colon win super. No, I actually <laughs> oh, go to my site. I type site colon win com. Isn't that fun? And then because I know I've written something about this, but I write so much I can't keep track of it. And the other one I actually the other one I that I've run into is uh, I'll do what you just said, which is you you click on links in Google search and you're reading something and you're like, This sounds That's awfully my, familiar. I remember I remember <laughs> writing this. Hey, yeah. while we're while we're getting Mary Jo Foley back, let me talk about uh, something from Citrix Share File. Uh, dot com. This is a product I use all the time, so I feel like I have some expertise in the matter. Um, I've tried them all. I, I don't want to name the names of all the competitors, but you know what they are. There are lots of ways people have tried for the last 10 years to solve the basic problem of how do I safely send files, sometimes very large files, to clients and colleagues. Uh, in my case, I'm sending large audio files out, but they might be, I don't know, AutoCAD drawings. They might be images. They might, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that you share with your clients and colleagues. Email is bad to do this with for a lot of reasons. You've heard me say many times, don't send email attachments. It's a, it's a great way to get infected, to spread infections. Uh, but also, uh, if it's a large file, you're going to get bounce backs. There are still plenty of people, probably your clients, who still have mailboxes that can only handle total 10 megabytes 
I mean, that's crazy. You couldn't even send them an image from my camera. Um, that's very common still. So you can't send, you know, gigabyte files via email. It just takes too long, and it's just uh, unreliable. And then there's finally there's the issue of everything you send via email is like is like is like a postcard. You know, when you when you mail it, you know, anybody along the way, and there are usually multiple servers along the way, can go, oh, look at that. Which means if you are in an industry like the medical business where you are governed by privacy requirements like HIPAA, you can't use email. Enter share file from Citrix. It's actually a fairly new business for Citrix. They designed from the ground up the best way to share files with clients and colleagues. And I tell you, when I switched to share file, I was so happy. First of all, notice this is my share file page. It is a branded login. That's what you're going to see, but it's also what your, your share ease are going to see. They're not going to see the share file logo. They're going to see your logo. So it's very very nice, very professional looking. Um, you have a, a, a lot of ways to uh, share files. Now, I also am running a desktop op, uh, app from ShareFile that that automatically will sync everything I do uh, with ShareFile. Uh, I have ShareFile folders that are automatically synchronized up. I have folders for the different radio stations. And so I just drag files there, and they're automatically synchronized. But you can also use ShareFile uh, via the web interface. This is really handy. If you have a one-off that you want to send, they have the file box. You just drag a file over to the file box, and then you can send it by clicking the send link. Uh, now, you can either do it like email style or give me a link I can copy and send using my own email software, and I like to do that because look at, and I always use this to show you because look at the, the different features in here. I can have them email me when the item's been downloaded. I can require recipients to enter the name and email me before downloading. I can say when the... Uh, file expires and uh, because I'm using the file box I have only three choices on the regular system when you're using your own file system you have anything from one day to one year or you know not at all I'll say it's gonna expire after a day I'm gonna say uh, unlimited downloads but you could have anything from one to ten and then send file now what I'm gonna get is a unique and uh, very obscure link I don't know how many d letters and numbers that is, but it's a very obscure link. When I copy that to the clipboard, I could paste it in an email, but I'll just paste it right in my browser here and show you what my customer is going to see. This, very simply, my company logo, a f the name of the file, and a download button. I can send a folder in the same way. They could pick the files from the folder or take the whole folder as a zip file. This is simple, easy. Even people who are not very technical can use this and that's really one of the real features of this i don't have to explain it i used to i mean i've used other programs where you have to kind of explain how it all works and it's just frustrating and they often get it wrong share file no no problem at all almost unlimited file size working with others is easy by the way every file that i have automatically synced is available to me at any time as cloud storage so i can log in with the share file account or use the free share file apps on my uh, phones really recommend it to you if you if you are uh, sending files to clients or colleagues in business. And I've got a 30-day trial for you. If you go to sharefile.com, you'll see that button that says uh, try it out. Uh, click that. Actually, I want you to use the one in the uh, in the top of the page where it says radio listeners. Click here. I know this is not a radio show, but the, they haven't figured that out yet. It should say podcast. But anyway, click that one. And then enter our offer code Windows. And we're going to get you a 30-day free trial. That way, Paul and Mary Jo get credit for this. You can also select an industry. They customize it for a huge range of industries. Everything from photography, nonprofits, video, and medicine. Uh, and then you get your, three tri your free trial. 30 days free when you go to sharefile.com. Click the free trial button and use the offer code Windows. Do the button at the top of the screen, if you will. We thank Citrix for their support of all of our shows, and especially of Windows Weekly. All right, Mary Jo is back. We've decided, Mary Jo, we're buying you a cable modem. <laughs> Seriously. This is this is I'll, not better. It's like worse. To, I'd like to kill Skype, personally. You know, people blame <laughs> Skype, but I don't know. I think Skype's been good. If, if We find that if somebody's got a really, uh, like Paul, we rarely have problems, right, Paul? True. If you have a consistent bandwidth, it works great. Uh, and it's just, it's totally dependent on that. And what I think I have learned from doing this, you know, podcasting thing, from being an internet broadcaster is the bandwidth that you are advertised, <laughs> you never get. And even uh, yeah. if you do get it, it's inconsistent. 
Internet access is much less consistent than people think it is. It goes up and down fast and slow. If you're browsing or getting email, you don't even notice. If you're trying to do something like send live audio and video in real time, it's very challenging. Anyway, glad we got you back, Mary Jo. Thank you very much. Um, let's. Uh, do you want to address this? Because I see it everywhere. PC sales, not great. I don't think we need to beat it to death. I just wanted to it. mention that HP is the latest to say that Windows 8 sales, not so much that they weren't great, but they weren't as good as what they had expected. Do you think it'll ramp still, up, that it's just a matter of momentum and it's, it's like a choo-choo train leading the station? It's slow at first, but it's going to... I honestly have no idea. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. I'm nervous that the market for traditional PCs has... That's really what's going on. If you looked at Apple's, you know, if you looked at Apple's Mac sales figures, same, uh, thing. same thing. They're they down. talked about that on the call. They said, basically, look, you know, the market for traditional PCs is down. We're seeing that, too. You yeah. know. Everywhere. Uh, it's not the OS... No, I, it's, I think people hang on to these things more. And all the excitement, you know, such as it is when it comes to buying things, is around gadgets, right. you know, tablets and phones. And uh, a lot of these things, which, you know, Microsoft does not target this market yet, are these low-end uh, tablets that are typically seven or eight inches and cost as little as $150 or maybe as much as $350. And, uh, you know, it's easier to snap those kind of things up. And keep a PC around a year or two longer, uh, which maybe you wouldn't have done 10 years ago. Right. Well, and that's another so. side effect of, of the great success of the uh, PC industry is that mm -hmm. the one you bought three years ago isn't particularly obsolete. Well, actually, I would say, you know, Microsoft, it's funny because this uh, goes against the grain of their own success, but this is the second version of Windows in a row where they had never done this before in the past that has lower hardware requirements than the one that came lower, before it. Lower, not higher. Lower. Yeah, not the same, but lower. Yeah. And, you know, when you do that, it's something that you can kind of applaud from a technical level. But what that also means is that if you have a PC that's five years old, it's going to run Windows 8 just fine. It's not going to multi-touch, obviously. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a weird it's kind of a weird issue. But, you know, there it is. It's one of the reasons why probably touch exists, because you, you got to have something. I think, I, yeah, absolutely. That's the, 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 the reason why someone would go buy a new device. Right. It's the same thing in TVs. People weren't, you know, everybody who wanted an HDTV had bought one, so they made up something, a 3D. Sure. And uh, now 4K. They're, they'll find a way. Yeah. Is it why Dell is trying to go private? Actually, you know, I don't know. Did we talk about this? I can't remember. No, this, this is this is a story yeah. that just came yeah. out this week. But I don't mean Dell specifically, but this notion that, you know, one of the, the weird things about publicly held companies is that they have to exhibit growth. Right. Right. You can't hit some some amount of money and say, hey, we're done. You know, look at Apple. Make... Apple's such a good example. Apple had yeah. a record quarter and the stock price plummeted. Yeah, actually, I can explain why that happened if you're curious. But <laughs> the <laughs> the but but more to the point. um, it's just the way that Wall Street is. You know, when you're publicly held, every quarter, growth, 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 What have growth, you done for growth. me lately? Yeah. 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 Um, when you can't exhibit growth that is from the same quarter a year ago, uh, you'll try to make lemonade a little bit and say, well, we have growth over the previous quarter, even right. though that's not actually how things are measured. Right. Um, I think what Dell is trying to do is get off of that treadmill and say, you know, we have a good business here. We don't have to be subject to the whims of Wall Street. We right. can just keep making money and, and, and be successful and stay in business. You know? That's exactly why I'm not public or and I don't take investors. I don't want that pressure. I want to just... That's something I've never understood, you know, because unfortunately, stock prices and the stock market, and it's it's black magic as far as I'm concerned. There's no well, you pay rationale a price for, for that why. money. I didn't look this up, but I, I saw in passing, there was a story, I read, I read a story about Netflix today. Apparently, Netflix posted better than yeah. expected results. Yeah. You 40, know, they made a couple of million dollars. 40% gain. What's their stock price, Leo? It's up 40%. But what's their stock price? Oh, I'll have to look. I believe it's over $100. Wow. What's Microsoft's stock price? <laughs> what is it, five? 27? 26. <laughs> no, seriously. I, are you trying to tell me that Netflix... <laughs> Netflix I mean, is 146 I, bucks up 146, $43 okay. today. Okay, so it was 100 then. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, had, I had 100. It's up head, $43 today. <laughs> Microsoft is probably up 43 cents today. Yeah. 
You know, or that is not. amazing. <laughs> or down, or down 43 percent, whatever. But I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? It's it's crazy. Yeah. 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 It's it's yeah. Really so look up Microsoft. Yeah. Actually, Microsoft stock will be interesting today because they're going to post their results soon. Yeah. $27.88 up. <laughs> 27 cents. 27 cents. Yep. And tell me that makes sense. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is the uh, what sometimes people look at is price to earnings. And the mm -hmm. price to earnings for Microsoft, $15. The price to earn for earnings of Apple mm -hmm. is now $10. Price to earnings of, I wonder what Netflix is. $1,000. $500. You weren't off by very much. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, that's my point. You know, it's just, it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world. They make a lot of money, uh, and they're doing great. So, Facebook's is even less than uh, Netflix. Facebook's is only 300 or 288 bucks. Netflix. Netflix, 500 mm -hmm. Price to earnings. <laughs> you know what? I don't think they got that big a future. <laughs> I don't either. Unbelievable. That's you know that's why it really is what the stock market is doing isn't shouldn't be news from a technical point of view from a you know from the kind of uh, range that we talk about. But you can't help but talk about it because it's just it's such uh, amazing thing. Oh no, you have to. Of course, it's part of this part of the deal. I mean, at some point, these uh, companies decided to go public so that they could grow. Right. Beyond what would have been possible if they'd, you know. You know what Amazon's uh, price to earning so is? Three thousand eight hundred and sixty-four dollars. Fifty-four dollars. Yikes! <laughs> I've never seen one that high. That's astounding. <laughs> That's a, just astounding. Hmm. But you know, for for our our listeners, everybody's like, okay, so why would Microsoft want to invest in Dell? Yes, like why? What, what's like what, so what Microsoft, Microsoft has said we want to take a two billion dollars. Dell wants right. to go well, private, which I understand they want to buy back their stock. Yep. Why, why would Microsoft right. invest in uh, the Nook? Here's why the risk. Why would Microsoft invest in Nokia? But that's different. Yeah. Dell's well, a PC manufacturer. Yes, because Dell's a PC manufacturer. You already pissed off the OEMs by <laughs> making Surface. Now you're going to be an OEM. Yeah. Well, they did this well, with Nokia too, right? Like they yeah, they right. have a special relationship with Nokia, and everybody was saying, "Oh, that's it. None of the other phone OEMs are going to like that." But nothing's really happened no, because right. of it. No, right? that's a good point. And actually, Michael Dell has is one of the few. Well, maybe not one of the few, but one of the guys who's come out and said, "Look, Steve Ballmer told me that that they were doing it doesn't change our relationship in the slightest. It makes Windows better. Great, we're all for it." Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, as some people are, are saying, okay, so would Dell become the manufacturing arm for Microsoft Surface? I don't, I don't <laughs> see that as being no, 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 no. what happens next. But I mean, these days you can't say never, right? Never say never. Never say never. Yeah. So by the way, th this just in, I'm told <laughs> that the Wedge Mouse Surface Edition, oh boy, is the same color as Surface. That's the difference. Ooh. Ah. So, so that's it's why it's new. That's why it's sixty-five dollars. Is it more? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know, but that's how much it cost. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have you have you used the wedge mouse? Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, it's not a it's not it's not ergonomic. <laughs> it's remember that? Remember that mo, mo, the hockey puck mouse that they had on the first another, iMac? Another another unergonomic design. Yeah. It's roughly that that quality level yeah. for a mouse. You know? So Microsoft's investment in Dell, you don't see it as a problem for Microsoft and their relationship with OEMs. Makes no, sense. you know what? If anything, so imagine you're HP or you're yeah. Acer or Asus or one of the other companies that partners with Microsoft and PCs, and you're looking at this from the outside. I don't think that what you're saying is, uh, hey, can we get a billion to $3 billion worth of investment from you too? It's good for you showing that you still care about this ecosystem that's important and you are not just doing your own thing, you know, that you're helping a company that has dedicated its business to basically reselling one of your big products. I mean, it's one of the, you know, Dell is one of the biggest companies that sells Windows and Windows Server too, for that yeah. matter. So um, I think it's just a positive move for the ecosystem. Um, you know, if, if it had come out that Dell went to Microsoft and said, hey, if you invest in us, we can go, you know, private and we'll be in great shape for the future. And Microsoft said, no. <laughs> that would have been a chilling message right. for the rest of the No, PC it's industry. an investment in the in the PC business, we believe. By the way, Microsoft once invested in Apple too. 
I yeah. mean, a hundred million, not too much. Billion. Billion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a smaller yeah. investment, but they did. Yeah. No, smaller, but similar uh, non-voting, you know, like, well, yeah. they got non-voting shares in Apple. And in this case, they're not going to be involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the company. If that's Dvorak, uh, in his column in PC Magazine, says this is good for uh, PC, PC buyers. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, that Microsoft would be able to uh, use Dell's big factories in China to manufacture Microsoft gear as well. They don't have to worry mm -hmm. about Dell getting irked by channel conflict. And uh, he says Microsoft knows that the public is at the end of its rope regarding Windows and the near impossibility of keeping a system running trouble-free. I'm quoting, third-party machines running Windows allow anything and everything to be installed we're talking about the signature PC, basically. Yeah. With a Microsoft-branded PC or laptop, you at least get a reference standard Windows So I, I wasn't sure what he was going to say, but I was going to add at the end that one thing that should come out of this, if Balmer has any business acumen, is we'll do this. We'll give you $3 billion bucks. But Stop putting crapware on your PC. Stop putting crapware on the PC. No, seriously. I like, agree we'll, we'll 100%. In you. And you know we'll what? P Dell would become the gold standard. I don't see why they shouldn't. You know. Be, yeah. you know, even if it's okay, let's say it's a hundred bucks more a machine, Dell it's, would become but it's the not, gold a hundred bucks. We got to be talking about <laughs> like seven to seventeen dollars or something. Right. It can't be that much. It can't. Well, then you multiply by two because of uh, you know the markup and all of that. It, it probably is fifty bucks a machine. God, I hope not. I hope I really hope it's not that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I know mean, the other the other question is, could Microsoft say to Dell, "Hey, we don't want you to put crapware on there, and you know what? We don't want you to make any Chromebooks and no Android and no <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything." Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> How about that? Actually, you that, agree that's to that? one of the things that was rumored was, you know, one of the agreements was they will rely primarily on Windows. You know. Right. You know, Bloomberg. I don't know where they got the brilliant idea. They interviewed the Dell dude, Ben, <laughs> ben, is it, ben really? Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> And is he is he dating that girl from the Apple uh, Switcher ad? Uh, <laughs> Wouldn't that be Ellen funny? Fleiss? Yeah, that yeah, would, yeah. That would be great. So the Dell dude says, you know, it's really simple. I can fix Dell. Bring me back, dude. <laughs> you're getting a Dell. We, we should bring him back. Bring back the Dell dude, dude. You're getting a Surface. <laughs> he says, I think they're making a huge mistake. By the way, you're you're laughing at this, okay? But it could happen. 15, uh, well, 20 years ago, I guess now, or 20, 18 years ago, there was a story just like that that said Steve Jobs says he can save Apple, and oh, how we laughed. You know? <laughs> the Dell <laughs> I mean, dude. As he was driving net, nets, next into the ground, he was claiming that he was going to be able to save Apple. Remember? We, we yeah. all thought that was the stupidest yeah, thing we've ever heard. It's kind of a good move. Maybe the Dell dude is just as smart as Steve Jobs. <laughs> we'll never know. He says, <laughs> I think they're making a huge mistake. They simply need to bring back the Dell dude. That's it. Does, That's all they need to do. Like if they brought me back... For, their sales, stock, and media presence would skyrocket. This is by far the smartest move they could make. So it's he, like uh, Bill, you, Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. It is. You realize the reason he was fired is he was arrested in 2003 trying to buy marijuana in a kilt. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember I that. Did, but to me, that speaks to the demographic, you know? I think it's actually kind of a cool idea. There's a nostalgia factor <laughs> that would... would the problem is Dell is not trying to sell to 19-year-olds. Maybe for the Alienware brand, they could do that. They're trying to sell to uh, CTOs and Hey, they CIOs. were one of the companies that, uh, I, I hate to use the term innovative, but innovated, but innovated, if you will, with, you know, colored panels on their laptops. They, oh, yeah. they were always very, probably still are, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it was started in a college, Michael Dell's college dorm room. That's a di that was, in 2000, was a different Dell. It's a different Dell. I think they should bring him back. I think Microsoft should make that a requirement of the investment. We're getting close <laughs> to the Dell, dude. Yeah, really. the Dell dude and mm -hmm. signature PCs. Yep. Right. So I do like that signature PC idea, though. I would. I, I do, too. You know, I've always thought. Now, Vizio's doing them. I wonder how they're selling. They're beautiful. Yep. They're signature. They're a little more expensive. I wonder if that strategy is working for Vizio. I hope it does. I hope so, too. I, I, I feel very strongly about Signature. I wish more people used it. This week's X Surface News. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Are we talking about an Xbox Next? Yeah. Is this it going to be a this, Surface? This was kind of hilarious. So, 
there was there was a bunch of there were a bunch of news stories that went live this week saying the next Xbox is going to be plain old Xbox, no 360, no 720 attached to it, and um, there are a couple other pieces to this tip too that um, it would be presented at E3, blah blah blah. Then the person who uh, created all of this scuttlebutt admitted he just made it all up to see how gullible the tech press was. Yeah, and he sent everybody. He sent he he sent out a ton of of tips saying he worked at Microsoft in the gaming department. And hey, I have a tip for you. And he watched to see how many sites ran this without even checking, trying to verify or anything. And there were a lot of them. Oh man, most of them. Yeah. One <laughs> There are a lot of them. Pocket, yeah. Pocket Lint was the first to run one hour after saying, we have made an effort to validate two hours <laughs> before I got a chance to reply. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. You know, and then by, na by, by the next few hours, Yahoo, CNET, Gizmodo, VentureBeat, Tech Gi Digest, VG247. This, this is, by the way, the Gamer. problem I have with the tech news industry right there. Yeah. Because people pick up on something as if it were a fact. Yeah. You know? And it just yeah. runs. And yeah. it's not, you know, when I when I write about something or speak about something on this podcast that I don't know to be true in, in printed form or written form, I would write report colon rumor, you know, yeah. <laughs> this assertion, yeah. and and be very clear what I was saying. Um, uh, people don't do that for some reason. I, I, I are we really not that savvy to the fact that not everything you see online is a fact? <laughs> Yeah, Apparently. there's so much pressure to be first, right? Everybody wants to sure. be first. And a lot of times people will say, yeah, this is a rumor. And I didn't even try to check it, but here it is, blah. It's you know? not that's, merely the pressure of being first. Too, it's the lack of any consequence for being wrong. Yeah, true. There's, right. There right. is only upside to publishing this. There is no, there is, even now, well, there's the zero way, downside. Um, this Dell Microsoft story. Same thing. Comes courtesy of sources such as CNBC, Bloomberg, the New York Times, and the Wall Street Journal, which is why I wrote about it. Yeah, that <laughs> gives know? it some credence. I mean, and, yeah. and I, but I still wrote according to Colin yeah. and then explained that those were the sources. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I've got people, and Mary Jo does too, uh, regularly who write me and say, here's something that's happening. And, you know, so there are some people I know and trust, and then there's some people I've never heard of. And in the wake of this, a guy who had tipped me off to something, which I have not written about, wrote me back and said, hey, I, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, this is not what I'm doing to you. And just in case it wasn't clear, I sent you my real name and email address. And, right. um, and yeah, you know, sure enough, he did. But I, well, I still, but you know, you're I'm, a good I'm not, journalist I'm who protects his, you protect your sources also. Yeah. Yeah, not physically. I mean, obviously. If there's a, <laughs> <laughs> if there's a fist but, fight of some kind, I won't be there, but... <laughs> yeah. I, I would use him as a human shield, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I'll be behind you. <laughs> yeah, Leo, Leo, you probably remember this, but not not that long ago, back in the day, when I when I worked at PC Week, there was a rule. It said if you can't verify this with three independent sources who are not talking to each other, we're not running it. Right. Those days are so long done gone. and gone. <laughs> I mean, yep. I, sometimes I'll run something now with two sources. PC Week anymore. Well, that's yeah. the other problem, right? <laughs> and guess you know, why, right? Right. Uh, but I mean, now, now if I get a tip, I'll be like, okay, that's a really interesting tip and very believable. But I'm going to try to verify this with at least two other people right. before I even think about publishing this. I just especially, wanna... Go ahead. Yeah. especially if it's Rumors someone I don't to be know. The fun thing that was on the back page right. of a magazine. Right. I know. Spencer you know? the cat. Right. <laughs> yes. Yep. Like that's what right. that was, and I and everyone always enjoyed and, that and stuff. And you, you knew know? it was trash. You knew yeah. it was okay. completely inc not credible. <laughs> <laughs> but it was but it was fun and it was and the guy yeah. was so embarrassed it he didn't use his real name when he wrote his column. <laughs> right, right. It was Spencer the Cat. Yeah. Not like that anymore. I know. Well, and you know All what? All the insane We're, people have taken over the I asylum. Just, well, I'm just going to point out that you who listen to this show, you get the tech news you deserve. And if there is no consequence to <laughs> blogs and and to publishing this stuff and if That's they a, get millions of links, they're going to keep doing it. It's a variation of something I say to my kids all the time. You're getting it what you deserve, kid. You got the family you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, if, if as consumers yeah. of tech news, we don't punish, you know, we continue to read these journals and, then, and give them all the links, there's no reason for them to stop. They make yeah. tons of money on these. My, my other uh, one that falls in this category are the analysts who make predictions about the sales of things, you know. Right. And I, I don't have the... 
the mentality or the you know brain disease that would require me to do this. But I, I occasionally think I should keep track of this thing right. and see how they're doing, you know, knowing that they're ridiculously off base every single time they say anything. And I, you know, that was one of the decisions I had made very early on was that I was never going to directly quote analysts, right. that I would just give you my opinion, you know, that, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't really often run into people. I do, of course, but I mean, you know, that you read some quote from, you know, Gene Munster or somebody about, you know, sales of iPads in Q3 2015, and it's like, whatever. I mean, what are you talking about? You just pulled this thing out of thin air. Well, he's, but, and the thing that, you know, we got to say is he's, he's talking to a different audience. He's talking to an audience of investors. Yeah, but he, the problem is he's broadly. Right. Well, they want to get in the media on. because it's good, at, it's good uh, for business because then people read the synopsis and then they buy the. I don't report. know if you guys, did you guys see that thing I tweeted uh, first thing this morning? It was an analyst on some show, it was on like a Yahoo site. Who was saying, I, I don't, you know, I don't know if anyone buys these surface things. I've never seen anyone with a surface. Yeah. <laughs> there, that's research. What the like <laughs> I've done my <laughs> research. God. It's yeah. like this is a disaster. No one I know has one of these. <laughs> <laughs> so no one has one. That's it. Oh my god. Yeah, there's there's one that's good crazy. site if if people who are listening, if you don't know about this already, there's a guy, uh, Brad Sams, he works at Neo Win, and in his off hours, he does a site called Trekcore, T R A C O U R dot com. So he's trying to keep track of how accurate all the reporters are on tech rumors. Okay. So he has he does have the brain damage that I said I don't have. This is good. Yeah. He has he yeah. has an engine. He's created this. Um he he has yeah. people submit rumors it, this and then needs he, to be done. This it needs to be done. It does. It does. So you can actually that, search in it's... here for let's say let's search for surface and see and you can see all the actually, different Actually here's an idea. Uh, Microsoft is going to announce their earnings sometime in the next 30 minutes or so. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does anyone have any predictions? There you go. For what you think they're going to say. And I don't mean like how much money they made. I mean, how many, you know, how are they going to say how many surfaces they sold? By the way, so how many? Paul, you're are all they, over this thing. <laughs> I'm all over this thing? Yeah. Well, this is good. You should be. Uh, so. And, and by the way, this isn't complaining about you just saying here's what paul Thorat wrote here's expired rumors and, and active rumors <laughs> that's it's interesting and one of really the is major reach well you wrote it on twitter major yeah. retailers to sell surface starting oh. early next year that's one of the stories sure. right mm -hmm. and so yep. you can you it's can, true look it's, it's true. true you don't have to it, this doesn't he doesn't score them it looks well actually he does he has a leaderboard well, he must do it somewhere yeah here's the yeah he, he tracks reporters he oh, tracks them um, like, so here's the authors yeah. mary joe foley 100 percent yeah, look at that. One, you beat Kara Swisher. You beat Paul Thorat. It was eighty three percent. I think because I make fewer predictions. You don't make many. Maybe. You only have ten rooms <laughs> in here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't make yeah. many either. Yeah. This is good. Top sites: ZDNet, yeah. Business Insider, yeah. so, and Gadget. Yeah, I like this. So, what do you think, though, about Microsoft earnings? Okay, let's yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, let's all make a prediction. I, I, I say they're not going to say a word on surface sales. They they're not going to say it at all. I think they're going to say yep. that they sold over one million, and that <laughs> they have, but but that they have seen increased demand, and thus went into that the the rumor that was on the site was they pushed it out to other retailers faster than they planned to originally because so many people wanted them and couldn't buy them, and so the uptick is going to be faster going forward. And I also think they're not going to provide a sales update on Windows 8, but are rather going to say earlier this month we announced that we sold whatever the number was, 60 million. Those are my two. Very, very, uh, what's the term? Conservative. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah. I think they're going to do something for air cover. I don't know what, but they're going to try to do something to take people's eye off the Windows sales or lack thereof. But I don't know what they can do because that's what everyone's They should bring a magician. For. They should. <laughs> and now David Copperfield would entertain you. Um, He's going to make the PC business disappear. Or announce no Dell, the Dell thing. Itself. Right right when the market closes, announce Dell. And then that nobody will amazing. care about Windows sales, right? Yeah, you know by what? Way, that's true. That, that that's would a be, good idea. That would be amazing. And by the way, we're buying a $3 billion stake in Dell. And, <laughs> and we're, we're selling our Xbox business to Sony. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Which was my was favorite rumor prediction, this week. Right? Wasn't it? That was, that was a, someone wrote something about that. They did. And we're selling Bing to Google. Yeah. And uh, we're my, really... my tip of the week involves a, a book uh, written by a guy who used to work at Microsoft, which is terrible in many ways. But 
it's also fascinating for anyone who cares about Microsoft and, you know, the history of Microsoft. But one of the things that's in there is he says that Microsoft invested over $10 billion over 10 years in Xbox. Oh. $10 billion. Think, that sounds about right, actually, right? I think it's totally right. Yeah. yeah. I do, too, because I had heard 5 to $6 billion on the first one and 3 point something for the second one. And, of course, we know there was a billion-dollar warranty fiasco. Um, right. That's a lot of money to spend to get 80 million units of something out in the world. <laughs> you is know? that all and it by is, the way, 80 million units? At least half of which were sold to the same people. I because, have five because you know, I have three yes, red rings. I have, I have had at least eight through my house, at least eight. Wow. Um, so I, that's a low I, number. I, I, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a big number, Leo, yeah. I mean, Apple sold twice as many iPhones in the last six months, practically. Yeah. I mean, wow. And they're more expensive. Wow. I didn't realize it was yep. that low a number. Well, they're yep. inv and it's an investment. It's in that figure. By the way, it could be $89 million or I don't remember that. You know, we look it's, it up on Wikipedia. It's an investment. But no, at this point, <laughs> it's it's something worse than an investment. Yeah. Is there, well, a, is there a, like a financial term that equates to black hole? Like a, you do say know. this is going to be somebody. It could be. I, don't, I won't name names. But somebody says in this in the show notes you sent me, this is going to be a yep. huge year for Xbox, and it won't. And you'll hear something before June, before E3. Yeah, I can't say anything, but beyond that, I, other than that, uh, the Microsoft guys had posted a countdown clock for E3. Yeah, and so a lot of people think that E3 will be the big. Larry Herb did right. Yeah, that's not it. That's not. That's the David Copperfield move. Look over yeah. here. We're going to make it disappear. <laughs> I think I think what they're going to announce at E3 is Connectimals 2. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, boy. boy. Yeah. Now in HD. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Something to look forward to. I like this. My, I like this, my friend. You and I both. You can stick that on that website we were looking at, baby. Uh -huh. Put that on track. <laughs> <laughs> so yep. your advice to me, Paul, because I'm I've got a hole in my uh, media center where an Xbox mm -hmm. used to be. Uh, I got a PlayStation Three. I'm thinking I was going to put a Steam box there, but maybe should, mm. your advice, wait and see. There might be. Something uh, we already else. know through previous we heard uh, that, reports right. that there are going to be multiple devices. For example, we know that. Um, what I'm saying is, one of them might fit nicely there. All righty. No, right. I mean, obviously, the Xbox. The announcement the Xbox. is going to be before June, but who knows when the product will appear? It's right. Right. There you go. It's way, way off. There you go. Maybe next year, even you know. I don't. I doubt it. No, but, you think of this year, 2013, Christmas, 2013. It would be. They always do November, right? Yeah. November's the yeah, big. Yeah. This. I, it, God, if they ever announce this thing and it comes out next April, They're that bad. is just that's no. bad. No. Yeah. Nobody buys game machines in April. No, it has to be this year. That, that I don't know, but. It has to be. It yeah. just has to be. Uh, Windows Phone news. I, you know, I love this idea that uh, they may be put. In, that Nokia has said that they're the pure view is it the last Symbian phone that 808, which was what is it the 41 megapixel camera. Sure. But I did see a rumor, and I don't know where it came from. So don't don't put me on don't put me on track core. <laughs> it was the Verge. <laughs> that they're going to do a met metal Windows Phone with the pure view sensor in it. Yeah. Yeah. That the real the real pure view, not like because you know they call yeah, yeah. Um, everything's pure view. Everything's pure view, right? But this is but the pure view. Mex the, mex right, the forty one megapixel, right? That would be oh, that would be amazing. Oh. That yeah. I might trade in my Galaxy Note for. By the way, I, it, actually, here's a question you can answer for me. I was at the a basketball game the other night. The guy in front of me had a Samsung Galaxy S three, and yeah. he was taking photos, which I was also taking photos. Yeah. And my 8X, uh, I have an HTC 8X, takes great photos compared to any camera I've ever owned. But, man, this guy, his phone, it looked like he was taking SLR photos. I could not believe. He would zoom in on the court. He would take a picture of some action thing. It looked beautiful. Nice, you know, clarity and contrast and everything. And he would send it to somebody. And I was wondering about that. Like, I, I don't, are these pure view things going to be, how do you improve on... The quality that's available today on other phones. I mean, I realize there's a certain number of pixels, but isn't it more than that? I mean, I have a theory. Yeah. Uh, we interviewed a guy named Hans Peter Brodmo, who works at Nokia. 
he is kind of he's in charge of kind of making Nokia more um, like a startup with uh, they have a Nokia venture internal venture fund. It's really interesting, and he's also a camera buff. In fact, I met him at that camera mm -hmm. show we went to in Norway okay. in, uh, last year. Is he doing the peer review stuff? He had a peer review with him. Mm. And he says, my big hot thing right now is computational photography. His feeling is, and I think he's absolutely right, that we've kind of reached the megapixel limit and the lens limit, that what we want to do now is get the best image we can into the phone, and we're, we're capable of doing that, or soon will be. And yep. then, because you have a, a solid computational platform here with, you know, quad-core processors, oh, like start using computation. This is what the Lytro is, right? The Lytro which lets you focus in various planes. It's is not doing that like physically, the, uh, it's computation. What is that thing that the iPhone does where it takes two pictures in a row and HDR. then it combines them? Yeah. HDR. Sort of that type of thing, it's but taking to the next thing. level. that kind of thing, taking to the next level. So if you think about it, you now are taking, you have this camera as a very powerful computer. Yeah. So it does make sense that you want to give it a, a 40, they don't, they don't, generally speaking, you, the 41 megapixels, you don't, that's not that's the raw form. You don't give out a camera a forty one megapixel image. But what they'll do is they'll use that to zoom, for instance. Now you can zoom in forty one megapixels. So you could crop it and have incredible quality. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Or they use the extra megapixels for more dynamic range. They have a way to do that also. Right. So there's a lot of so in other words, shoot in in effect, shoot the picture three times with this in a, in the same shot. They have a lot of yeah. stuff they can do. Yep. So I I'm eager to see this camera. I, I, I am too. Phone. And I, I think hope. what you'll see is a Nokia uh, camera program that's not the Microsoft camera program that has a lot more capability. Hmm. Okay. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. But I think that's where we're headed. I think it's uh, where we're headed everywhere. Even Canon, you know, just shipped a new point and shoot. Uh, that's it's more about it's as much about the software as anything else. It's very it's very interesting what we're starting to see. I always want a better camera on my phone. I think so. You don't want to carry a camera. I don't want to I have great, I spent tens of thousands of dollars on camera yeah. gear. I don't want You're to so carry close. it. So I close. I don't want to carry my phone. Yeah. I've got a friend who wants to buy an iPhone 5 because it has those little lens attachment things. <laughs> and I was like, listen, get, please get an iPhone 5. But you know, if you're going to do that, just carry a camera. Yeah. Even even like a little SLR camera would, yeah. <laughs> or a, a point and click camera would be <laughs> right. better. I mean, be that's that. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, that's the to me that's the only thing I'm really missing in camera phones is the is quality zoom because it's digital zoom. Yeah. If I had if they were some way to zoom, give you good quality zoom on a on a camera a phone. Yep. Oh, I'm done. Well, I'll tell you though this guy, like I said, this guy was zooming in on the court and. I was really blown yeah. away just looking over shoulder at it. I mean, you could well, you could tell because I was taking pictures of the same thing, and I'm looking like that's man, the, that's I mean, the same Sony sensor Apple uses in the iPhone. Okay, on the Galaxy. It is S3. the Note. The Note Two has the same yeah. camera as the it's S3 an eight megapixel yeah. sensor. As far as I know, it's the same one Sony sells as, uh, to all three companies. Notably stunning, or all three phones. And yeah, yeah. and I think it really comes down to software at that point. They don't. Nobody's going to have optical zoom because it makes the phone too fat. That's one of the weird things about the PureView 808. It's a fat phone. Yeah, they've got to get yeah. that sensor skinny. That's the way they always used to be. Remember, there's always the bump for the camera. Right, right. Uh, Nokia Drive Plus is coming to Windows Phone 8. Nokia has a very good map system. It's what Bing uses. Yep. Yeah. This is actually my pick. So let's skip over this. Okay, one. skip, skip, skip. Okay. <laughs> Update uh, to the Windows Phone SDK for Windows Phone yeah. seven point eight. That means yeah. we're so get Windows it. Phone seven eight is the resizable live tiles and the choice of themes that people who have the existing Windows phones are going to get to make them look more oh, like a Windows Phone eight. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? It but you know, nice, they actually. talked about this. It is nice, but they talked about it last June for the yeah, first time, June. I believe, yep. and. People yeah. don't have it still, and I, I think a lot of people are frustrated why this hasn't come out yet. Um, but supposedly, maybe by January 31, uh, it could maybe start rolling out to users, yeah, well, and it'll wait, take where, a while. Where does that rumor come from? How, how do we know this? The January 31? I think that's yeah. WP Central. Um, I believe that's who had that date. Uh, Talks, Microsoft's uh, just saying Q1. Rep one of the wireless carriers. I mean, like, I... <laughs> Microsoft's saying Q1, Q1, yeah. so... It's not completely without any. Obviously, the SDK release suggests right. soon. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Some, they're coming to get you. 
<laughs> yep, they're coming. <laughs> and uh, Verizon uh, has got an Ativ. Yeah. Yeah. Kind yeah. of a you disappointing. Too, you don't know, sound too happy. <laughs> about that. What is, uh, does Verizon have the, the HTC? Piece? They don't have that yet. They do. Oh, they, they do. do. Yeah, they do. So they have the eight X, the and again. they have the Lumia eight twenty two. Oh. And now, so this is the this is the lower end of TV. This is the like mid range phone. It wasn't the really nicer one that we saw at the Windows Phone launch. That one never came to the U.S. I don't think at all. Still not in the U.S. Uh, yeah. Definitely not to Verizon. Mm. Not to anyone. It's just not here. Yeah. So this is. I don't understand the point of this phone because. Verizon sells a mid-level phone, the A22, which is great. And by the way, there's a new red version they just released also this week, which looks really nice. Um, but the Nokia uh, Lumia A22 comes with Nokia's apps, which is a uh, prime benefit of getting such a device. The Samsung a Odyssey does not, and I just don't see anything going on there. It's, you know, the old resolution, 5-megapixel camera. Ugh. Well, you got to think that. I see that no reason for this. Samsung has such a commitment to Android that they just can't care that much about Windows Phone. They're doing so well with Android. Right. And they even released information that they're going to do uh, their own operating system, a Linux-based operating system. What is it called? Tense City or something? So <laughs> it just seems to me like Windows Phone. I was Phone. just thinking we needed another mobile operating system. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we've seen uh, such great success. It's like, you know, Windows has done so well, we thought we'd make another operating system. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Nokia, it's crazy. Nokia is going to end up being the Windows phone company, I think. They, besides the fact that Microsoft's invested them, they're selling quite a few. Either that or the smallest freaking part of the Microsoft empire. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's still <laughs> alive, huh? Yeah. Tizen, that's the name of it. Thank you, Web6321. Oh, yeah. Tizen. 13.4 uh, million Windows Phone handsets sold in 2012, according to Nokia. That was buried way in there, by the way. Yeah. I was looking over their little press release thing, you know, the little fact sheet, which is yeah. like 87 pages long. And uh, I did, ran across this, like, seriously, like 29 pages into it or something. 13.4 million Windows Phone handsets in 2012, which is, you know, not bad. 4.4 million in Q4, but... Um, 700,000 in North America. Wow. Up from 500,000 a year ago in the same quarter. But they're not selling a lot of these things here is what I'm thinking. I mean, that's that's yeah. a small number. So where are they selling them? Where do you think Windows Europe, Phone? Europe, Asia, yeah. and the Middle East and Africa. And it's probably the, the lower end 800s, right? Yes, absolutely. But, you know, the thing is, uh, off the top of my head, because I'm not looking at the data right now, I believe that the size, and I should say, uh, uh, Nokia's smart devices include the S40 product. Uh, right. Oh, Symbian. That right. No, the yeah. old Symbian product, Yeah. Uh, which is going downhill fast. It's gone. And no, Lumi's. that was the point, was the PureView 808 is the last Symbian. Yeah, so um, they don't sell those in the U.S. So the 700 figure is well, North America, but those are all Lumias. That's the only thing they sell here. Yeah. Uh, the numbers for other parts of the world could, in, could include Symbian devices, too. Um, but still, roughly speaking, if I'm not mistaken, the market for Lumia phones in Europe is approximately 20 times bigger than the one in North America. That's, how, that's the disparity. Sins of the fathers. You know what else also had this kind of sales disparity, Leo? What? The Amiga. <laughs> so the well Amiga in Europe, was did it? huge yeah. in Europe. Yeah. And that worked out great, so I don't see any problems. I believe it's the sins of the fathers. I think it goes back to it's Nokia's lack of presence in the U.S. goes back to yeah. their decision moon, many but it, moons no, ago but still, not they to make do deals phones. with American carriers. But they were on everything. I mean, they well, almost everything. I mean, they don't, they're not on Sprint yet, is it? Or team, uh, not they on are Sprint, now, but, be. but, will be. but you're, the damage to the brand was done over the many years that you couldn't buy a Nokia phone at the phone company's store. Mm. Yeah, I think and, the other mistake they're making is not putting their flagship phone on everything. Yeah, I agree. Right. Like, so they put the 900 so and the stuck to AT&T, AT right? They're in, like indebted yeah, to them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, gotta, too bad. You got to have those uh, carrier relationships. Apple didn't want to, but they did and it was and they had to and it was Oh, well, it was a different market then though, right? I mean, yeah. this is not 1997 or whatever yeah. that was. Yeah. I bought um, a lot of Nokia of unlocked or 1997. What did they say? 2007, sorry. Yeah. Living in the past. What year me. is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is you steam my laptop for me off. I, I, <laughs> So, um, what, uh, 
When is microsize at one o'clock? It's going to be within fifteen minutes. Within, so of course yeah. we won't be on the air. Well, we could be. <laughs> well, I'll just drag this show out. Yeah. Uh, Apple, Let me talk about netbooks a little bit. I can make this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. They're back, baby. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Here he goes again. But we did. Hey, I heard from someone from Microsoft, by the way, who said that thing you said about netbooks. Exactly what happened. Yeah, I think mm. you're right. I think so, you're right. Yeah. Let me just reiterate it in case you didn't hear it last time. Since he's right. <laughs> <laughs> time to say it again. Mary Jo's going to go into a beer coma. Yeah. I am. Well, we'll watch for the uh, the results. Um, in the to, meantime. In the meantime. Uh, right now, I'm sitting and looking at you. Next mm -hmm. Thursday, I will not be sitting and looking at you. I'll be looking at this. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, is this your, like, seat view? Yeah, they have a... yeah, seat view. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. All right, here's something to throw by whoever you're going with. Is it Lisa? Lisa, of course. I'm um, not, I don't even know uh, what a quarterback is. So rather than try to change your seats. Yes. This is what I would say. No, we already did. Oh. That we're okay. now on the Niners' side. That, never mind. <laughs> Why? What did you say? What would you? What did you? I was going to say. Do? Think about it. You're you're in a stadium. Nobody cares. I agree. This, you're looking out at this vista view. You've got, and if all of the fans for the for your team were on the other side of the stadium, yeah, that is what you would be looking at, and that might not be such a bad way to enjoy the game. A sea of gold and red. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's all. I think her point, and I think she's right, is when you go to a game like the Super Bowl, where ninety percent of the people are there because they're clients and not because they care about football. Yep. That you want to sit with at least a group of people who do care, you know. So that, in fact, it's fun. Ben Ha of uh, I can has cheeseburgers also going. He had the same reaction. He said, "I know it's not going to be loud in the stadium, so at least if I sit with some Niners fans, we can all cheer." This little so okay. what, when you watch the game, there'll be this tiny pocket <laughs> of people going. Aah! That's us. <laughs> I would be shocked if I was able to pick you out in the crowd, but. I'll give yeah. it a go. You may, you may see, you may be surprised. Look for a guy half gold, half red. Uh, I'm going to paint right down the middle of my face, and I think Lisa's going to shave 49 in the back of my hair. Wow. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And I will be wearing my rainbow union suit, but otherwise, I shouldn't stand out too much. Just to be clear that you're from San Francisco. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Nice. Uh, I'll tell you, in in uh, New Orleans, you're not going to stand out. In the no, slightest, I know. So. I know. Even with that. And the Vuvuzela. Right. Don't forget yeah. that. The only man in the entire Superdome. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to sneak it in. I have a collapsible Vuvuzela. <laughs> Um, we are going to take a break, come back with uh, your suggestions, your pick of the week, your software, uh, a very nice, a very uh, lovely code name of the week, and a beer of the week, too, as we continue with Mary Jo's 40 Beers in 30 Days Challenge. <laughs> We're kind of almost uh, to the end. you got uh, just another yep. week or so left. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, what I was saying is I won't be here next week. Iaz will be uh, filling in, just so you know. Yeah. Right. So he will find out what the final beers are. Our show today brought to you by our friends at Audible.com. Paul and I have been big Audible fans for the longest time. We are just smitten by the idea of having somebody read to us. <laughs> just like my mommy did when I was yeah, little. Uh, maybe, you know, I, can't admit, I, I won't include you in this, Paul, but I admit that's probably, you know, a little bit of that is just I like being read to. Um, it's also the issue is I spend a lot of time in the car. A lot of time at the gym, a lot of time places where I can't hold a book, but I would like to get some reading done. And Audible is so great for getting reading done. In fact, it really brought me back to liter literature, um, uh, a lot of history. Paul and I love the World War II stuff. We've been listening to a lot of history. You're probably listening to Terry Francona, the Red Sox years. I actually, I am. But Are I'm you fine. really? <laughs> yeah. I wish they had Francona reading it. I do too. Although, by the way, here's a little fact for you. Yeah. Scroll down the page and yeah. look at what else that narrator has done. Well, let's see. Jeff look. Gurner. Oh, I like Jeff Gurner. Well, no, I no, it's on that name. page. You don't he did Freedom, oh, Kill, right. Decision, and Demon. All, all the Daniel Juarez books. Yeah. I, I like mean, that's him. Kind of, yeah, this is, pretty by good, the huh? way, uh, I want to point this out at Audible because what happens is you get these great narrators. I mean, they're so good. And then you become a fan not only of the book, but of the guy or gal reading it. And, right. and and people literally buy books because, oh, Jeff Gurner's reading it. Um, yeah. 
And I, you know, I can, I totally understand that. There's a, there's, Jeff's not my favorite. He has a young voice. Um, oh, no, he has a kind of You're a like young, an audible snob. I am. I'm an audible snob. I like the old voice. You know, my favorite is the guy who does the Patrick O'Brien uh, novels. And actually, they have a couple of different. Um, is his name is Tull? I think it's Patrick. Is it Patrick Tull? Yeah. And get the so if you're going to get the uh, Aubrey Matron series, yep, um, but you've never read these, you really ought to. This is listen. This is Patrick Tull. He's an older guy with a kind of a gravelly voice, and I know for some people they wouldn't like this, but ah, boy, it grows on you. Kinder or more helpful, Patrick O'Brien. <laughs> All right. He's kind of talks. And now. Actually, Master that's not him. This and is Command. another one of my favorite narrators. Not Patrick Toll. Here comes Patrick Toll. Chapter Tull. one. That's him. Ch the Chapter music room one. in the governor's house at Port Mahon. A tall, handsome, pillared octagon. Now picture was yourself. filled with the triumphant first movement. Don't you feel like you're, I mean, I, I feel like I'm sitting in front of a fireplace with a snifter of brandy listening to a great book. Probably I'm in the if Toyota. You look at the uh, the Ken Aletta book, uh, World War 3.0, which is probably a pick of mine from yeah, 200 yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah. Who um, that? The guy who does the reading of that to me is like ultimate business book audio voice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you there's know? a certain style. Yeah, I've actually been listening to this one recently, although this too is not actually my pick. But World War III, actually, I listened to myself. I loved that. Yeah. It's about me. It seems so irrelevant today. I know. <laughs> you know, in a way. I know. Ken Auletta is one of my favorite writers yeah, about media. Definitely. I wish he wrote more about the computer industry, to be honest. He's kind of gotten out of it. Now he's like uh, Mr. Media guy. I wrote a book about AT&T, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And, uh, I think the last, was the last one Google? The DOJ it... trial he did, too. Did he? Oh. That, I thought he did. Uh, the, the Microsoft one. Yeah. Yeah. That's Microsoft. right. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah really, that's, what, that's, that's what World War yeah. 3.0 is. Yeah. Oh, it is? Wow. So, yeah. Let that's me, an old. I mean, it's ten years old or more. Yeah, that's old. Oh, he wrote a Google book too. Yeah, Google. So the guy. So the guy Googled. Yeah. So the guy Robert O'Keefe. This is uh, what he sounds like. Who narrated World October nineteenth, nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. David Boys entered the E. Barrett Prettyman United States Courthouse for the District of Columbia. <laughs> oh, that's a name I don't hear enough these days. David <laughs> Whatever Boys. happened to David Boys? Oh, he's still kicking around. He was. He is. He's, a, he's a lobbyist now, isn't he? Yeah, he was on. He's actually on Microsoft's side in one of their U.S.-based patent yeah. Isn't that trials, funny? if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the deal Might with have been Audible against, going up against Barnes and Noble was that him? Yes, I think you're right. Might yep, have been part of Microsoft's was. team for Barnes and Noble. <laughs> I think, I think he right. was. See, these lawyers—they're like football players. They they switch teams. I was going to so. say like cockroaches, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> or cockroaches. <laughs> you can stamp them with your foot all you want, but they're going to keep you, coming you up. You know what the track. difference is between a, a porcupine and a, and a car full of lawyers, right? If I told if I told you the punchline, we would be off the air. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I'll let you I'll let you Does think about that a little bit. The pricks? Yeah. <laughs> All the pricks are in the inside. Uh, <laughs> uh, Audible is so proud to be sponsoring the dirty joke of the week. <laughs> yes, exactly. Dirty joke of the week. Uh Audible.com slash Windows. Go there. You can get a book for free. You'll be getting the gold plan. That's a book a month. Your first month's free. Your first book is free. Cancel at any time, but the book's yours to keep forever. Did you? What are you listening to today? I do have a pick. So I've been on this weird kick lately. This is so off for me, but um, I was talking about graphic novels with a friend of mine, and I had read some graphic novels like, you know, Batman, uh, or The Dark Knight Returns, or whatever it was, you know, 20 years ago or more, whatever, 25 years ago. Uh, I don't really read graphic novels anymore, but um, after talking to this guy, and I'm a fan of the Walking Dead TV series, I started reading the graphic novels. Oh, that's um, supposed to be really the, good. It's really good. It gets repetitive after a while, and it, yeah. it diverges from the TV show in ways that I actually find rather fascinating. So I, I've, <laughs> addicted is the wrong word, but I've read like 20 of these things now wow. in, in just a couple of weeks. But um, I'm kind of I'm very interested in how the stories diverge. And so if you're watching the TV show, you know that... They're in a, a lull, uh, kind of a, a lull for the show, and it's coming back in February. So I've kind of gone past that, and I know where the story goes with the, the book. I'm interested to see how they they do this. But the creator of the series has a book. Um, Microsoft's earnings are up, by the way. Yes, I have it. I'll pull it up and uh, we'll um, talk about it. In a second. Anyway, so the 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 guy who did this wrote a book called The Walking Dead: The Road to Woodbury, which deals with the major plot development that's occurring now on the TV show, which is already resolved in the book. So it's sort of a side story or prelude to The Walking Dead. 
uh, with some of the characters who entered into the most recent season. And so it's it's actually it's pretty great. I I, I intend to move off of The Walking Dead after this, but um, it's good. So. Anyway, let's move on to Microsoft Things, shall we? Our pick, audible.com slash windows. Go there and uh, get it uh, free. I think you're going to like it. Paul and I are big fans, and I know once you listen to that first book, you will be just as addicted as we are. Microsoft Investor Relations, earnings release, fiscal year 2013, two quarter. What are the, I'll let you, Paul, I'll let you scan the highlights. Looks like well, I mean, uh, revenue, it looks like twenty one point five billion. Twenty one point five billion in revenue, but that's for the quarter. Yeah, it's for the quarter. quarter. December thirty first. Uh, Operating 6. income, 8. net income, and diluted earnings per share for the quarter: seven point seven seven billion, six point three eight billion, seventy six cents per share. But but uh, where where, where it's where all the deferred programs right. kicking in, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Windows division yeah, five point eight eight billion in revenue. That's a twenty four percent increase. Over year over year, uh, year over because year. Because of the deferring program, right? right. Yep. Okay, Non-gap okay. revenue increased eleven percent for the uh, second quarter. Sixty million Windows so, Eight licenses. How many, uh, the, which is the number from before? So Twenty million a month, <laughs> like right. clockwork. Yeah. Nothing uh, on Surface, right? Nothing. nothing. That's what surface. I'm just curious. No so they didn't surface. say anything. Surface. I don't think so. Yeah, they just mentioned it in passing. Entertainment so, and uh, devices, three point seven seven billion revenue, a decrease of eleven percent. Obviously, they're going to have a conference call. Probably are having it. Well, actually, it's not yet. Hey, here's but, a um, huge one: the online services reported a eleven percent increase in revenue. Online advertising grew fifteen percent, but they still lost money. <laughs> they lost less. <laughs> they lost less. <laughs> they lost less. Yay! Increase. Yeah, revenue their call research. is at five thirty, so we can't. Get all the That's when the details will uh, will happen. Yeah. So someone will ask them about Surface, and I'm I'm just curious to see how they yeah. respond to that. They'll say we're not talking about it. We're very yeah. happy. <laughs> Forward-looking statements. Know, one uh, one interesting thing though, in, yeah. in Windows, they're calling out enterprise um, sales. So that yeah, to me are. means Windows Seven and uh, what they call enterprise agreements, like volume licensing agreements, not uh, Windows Eight so much. Right. Good. Well, I'm glad that uh, we we stalled so long on this show. I know. Because <laughs> we got that got that in. We often just miss it, you know. Yeah. I know. This is second year, second quarter in a row. We'd like to report that we have managed to get the earnings in at the tail end of the show. <laughs> it's just I'm not. It's not clear <laughs> if this is a huge. That's year over uh, year accomplishment increase on of our part. Fifty percent. Uh, tips of tip of the week, Paul. A new insider book about Microsoft. Is it good? No, it's terrible. Um, it's not actually new either. <laughs> so no. I, I became aware of this because he, this, the author of this, uh, Joachim Kempen, whose name is familiar to me, and I was curious I didn't know more about the guy. It's because he left Microsoft over 10 years ago. Oh, come on. Um, he's been talking a lot about Steve Ballmer with the press lately. And it the, the book has been promoted as his new book, which would be like why he is out and talking apparently. But actually the book came out apparently in October. I just wasn't aware of it. So I guess the way I would say this to you is if you care about Microsoft and the history of Microsoft and that kind of stuff, uh, this is obviously interesting because this guy worked at Microsoft. He has a lot of uh, very interesting perspectives. The book is, uh, it desperately needs to be edited and it's written in a very raw style. It's got kind of a self-published kind of quality to it. It's still really interesting because of what it's about and the things that he discusses are very interesting it would have been way more interesting if it had dealt with the subsequent decade to me because I've already read enough about this period. Yeah. Um, there are many, many books about the 1990s and early 2000s, including, by the way, that Ken Aletta book, which is fantastic, um, but still interesting. And so he, he talks about such things as, you know, how Steve uh, Ballmer came to power at Microsoft and the way he kicked aside people. And th there's some interesting things you can draw comparisons to stuff that happened later on, including possibly the exit of Steven Sanofsky, where he apparently has recognized people that could be a potential successor, and then he maneuvers them out of the company. Uh, can, I, can I say apparently, something about this pick? Yeah, please do. Um, so this guy who wrote this book um, mm -hmm. is probably the main reason that Microsoft was dragged into uh, <laughs> yeah. the Department of Justice trial. He ran the OEM, the OEM division guy. Yeah, he was the one who basically got them in huge hot water with the DOJ. And he was canned, basically, um, in 2002. 
Um, so I would take a lot of what he says about every everything pretty much with a Absolutely, few million but it's still, grains of salt. It's, <laughs> yep. No, it's 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 salt is an interesting word because the book is almost salty in, in yeah. the sense that it's 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 really I, I don't know if you guys know um, the guy that used to run Commodore and then went to Atari, uh, Jack, Jack Tremiel, Tremiel yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's gone, you know, is dead now, yeah. unfortunately. Um, if he, if that guy had ever written a book, <laughs> It'd be I would have expected it to read exactly <laughs> like this. He yeah. clearly has a chip. axes to grind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, He speaks totally. in very plain language, like yeah. really plain language. Um, <laughs> it's bizarre. I mean, it's... Um, yeah. It's the type of thing like, you know, when you get like a, a relative of yours gets older and then they just start talking and they'll say anything. And yeah. you, you just kind of look at each other and say, yeah, you know, Uncle it's Johnny. Just he's, he's just talking. That's for this guy, <laughs> yeah. Uncle Joachim. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love his name. It's a, The name of the, the book is such a Germanic name. Resolve yeah. und Fortitude. Right. Exactly. Just, that's what I mean by the Jack Tramiel thing. It's just. Resolve and Fortitude. It, it, it's what got that. It just sounds like that. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. The book is nuts. I, I'm very, being very clear. It's not a great book, but yeah. if you do care about this stuff, you kind of have to read it. It's like, um, it's just he was there. I mean, yeah. And, you, and Mary Jo's right. He certainly. This was the guy. So uh, uh, the primary point of the the DOJ trial was that IE bundling thing, and ultimately, yeah. uh, after years and years of courtroom and trial and all this stuff that was actually thrown out and the DOJ actually lost on that most crucial of points. But the thing that did happen as a result of all this is that Microsoft had to provide their PC maker partners with the same exact licensing for windows. And he was the guy who had orchestrated completely different licensing deals with all the companies. Right. And he has some examples where because, you know, say I don't remember the companies, but maybe gateway and compact at one time, were going to combine. And so as part of due diligence, you get to see the, the contracts that they have with other companies. And Compaq found out that Gateway was paying way less for Windows than they were. And they came running back to Microsoft like, what the hell is this? You know, and they, they demanded to get the same deal. And like, it, this was the thing that they had done. It was just basically back room. If you were a good negotiator, you could get a great price. And if you weren't, you got screwed. And uh, that's, you know, one of the things that happened to IBM. IBM got screwed by Microsoft pretty bad in the 1990s. But anyway... It is fascinating, and Mary Jo's right. The guy's a jerk, but <laughs> but <laughs> but but that's part of the reason why it's fascinating. He's Microsoft's <laughs> secret power broker. I love how that's and guess where now. that title came from? What? I it's from an article I wrote about him. No. In, oh, that's yes. great. Oh, that's great. Um, in uh, what year did I write that? Two thousand seven, I think, or no, late, way earlier, like 1998, I wrote about him because nobody really knew who he was at the time. And um, I wrote a story called Meet Microsoft's Secret Power Broker. Yeah. And it was about him. That's hysterical. He clearly Did loved you it. write it all in caps as he does? I did not. <laughs> and not with a German accent. Knowing Mary Jo, I have to say no. <laughs> I am the Secret Power Broker. You will resolve with fortitude. <laughs> exactly. It's, yes, yes. Yeah, it's like, right, right. Wow. Right. Resolution through fortitude. Wow. I'm sure in German that's that be title a German means manifesto something. Somewhere. That's got to be. It's something. It's yeah. it's it's a, it's probably one word. It was a sign on a prison camp. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Resolve will make you free. Um, your software pick of the week. You kind of allude. I accidentally <laughs> yeah, almost no, tipped okay. it off um, here. I had something else in here originally, but I I just feel like this is the, uh, such a big deal, and it really is. Um, Nokia Drive Plus Beta for Windows Phone 8. This is the thing that Nokia had promised last summer, that they were going to bring their turn-by-turn -turn navigation to all Windows Phone 8 handsets. And then, of course, when Windows Phone came out, 8 came out, we all wondered where it was. And so now it's out in beta. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, we used this last summer when we were in Europe and uh, actually used it over the GPS that people had in their car. It was just we just liked it so much better. And... Um, you know, if you unfortunately, if you buy like an HTC phone or a Samsung phone, you don't, you know, normally you don't get any turn by turn navigation. And in that sense, Windows Phone 8 is the only major smartphone platform that doesn't offer this functionality for free with the phone. But now everyone can get this. And this is an absolutely first class um, uh, turn by turn solution. Boy, so I got a feel for Magellan, Garmin. All those yeah. companies that used to make standalone GPS devices. I got so tired of waiting for this. I actually just bought Navigon. Yeah. Um, that software is usually very expensive, and you you buy it region by region. So right. I bought like the North America version, 
I think it's normally 60 or $70, but I paid 29 It was on sale over Christmas. But, um, yeah, this one's free, and it's, it's actually better, too. So Good. I'm really, really, really happy this is out. Excellent. Our Enterprise Pick of the Week from Mary Jo Foley. Yes. Um, this week, Microsoft started rolling out uh, the latest version of their Dynamic CRM uh, online service and also the comparable on-premises application. So this was something they actually um, started giving privately to customers back in December of last year. But now it's going to anyone who's a subscriber of CRM, uh, Microsoft CRM. And what's interesting, most interesting, I'd say, about this release is it adds Office 2013 support. It adds some new Bing uh, integration. But it also adds support for different kinds of browsers on Macs and PCs. So you have a choice now of accessing your CRM application from Chrome, Firefox, uh, Internet Explorer, obviously, or Safari on PCs and Macs. And you're going to also be able to do this uh, from Safari on the iPad by February. So if you're somebody who uh, is a multi-device, mo mobile multi-device shop, you're going to care and really want to get this new version pushed out to your users very quickly. Cool. Our code name pick of the week comes to us from the border of Argentina and Brazil. Yes. And do you know how to pronounce this, Leo, Iguazu. correctly? I've actually, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful. Have water. you been there? No, uh, I, yeah. uh, I, I went to, when I went to Buenos Aires, it was an option and I didn't go, but it's, but oh, I wow. talked to a lot of people who went who said, you missed the best part of the cruise. Yeah. It's supposed to it, be dramatic. It looks unbelievable in the pictures. It looks yeah. like, it looks like Niagara Falls on steroids pretty yeah. much, right? Oh yeah. Oh um, yeah. Huge. Yeah. So Iguazu is the code name for a new piece of Windows Azure that Microsoft is previewing uh, this week. It's the Notification Hubs piece of Windows Azure. And so I don't know why the Notification Hubs it has anything to do with Brazil or <laughs> Lee's Falls. <laughs> I was trying to think of a connection. I don't know what it is. But um, I can tell you what Notification Hubs are. They give developers a way to build more scalable cross-platform push notification services. Ah. Um, and so they already support uh, with this with this beta. They're supporting Windows 8 and iOS apps, and they're going to be adding Android and Windows Phone support very soon. And it lets you do all the things uh, that you want to do if you're pushing notifications out to different mobile platforms, like pub sub routing, tag based multicast, um, and a lot of other features. And you can get this for free right now in preview form if you go to Scott Guthrie's blog, Scott Goo, man of the red shirt. You will find this. I love your beer pick of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I could not resist this one. This is such a great name. Beer pick of the week is Cuvée des Trolls. Because who doesn't need more trolls in their trolls. life? Trolls. As long as you don't actually encounter them in real life, they're a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> we have so them like in cave, our comments. Cave of Trolls. Is that what uh, Cuvée, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Cuvée des Trolls is a uh, Belgian strong pale ale oh. from the Brasserie du Buisson Frere. Wow. Um, a very interesting brewery in Belgium, I believe. And uh, this is, this I just tried it yesterday, in fact, as part of my beer challenge, oh, and it was excellent. Yeah, Here only 7%. If, if you come to Europe next summer, you could go here. Know. It just would be so awesome. There. Have you been there? No? No, but I'm going to Are Belgium Are you going to Belgium? Oh, well, you're going to Amsterdam, Belgium. but we're going to spend a lot of time in Belgium, too. Oh, you're a wise man. I, know. I hear it's wonderful. It sounds go awesome. Brussels, it was really boring. delicious. Go to, go to Bruges and... <laughs> I don't know where this, yeah. uh, where in Belgium this is. Yeah, I don't know where in Belgium this is, but the uh, beer was excellent. It was uh, very light and citrusy, uh, but also a little bready. So if you if you're into Belgians, I think you would really enjoy this easy drinking Belgian. So lose by <laughs> Belgium. Don't know where uh, that is, but yeah. that's where it is. Yep. So that's I have uh, as of today eleven beers left to do by the thirtieth. Oh, you're good. Almost. Good. You're almost. Yes, that's like two a day, though. All right. And right moving. after this, you know where I'm going to be. <laughs> two beers a day, she can do that. Now, but these are these are full pints. Yeah, depending on the style, different sizes. Okay. I'm actually going to the yard house right after this, so I could potentially drink eleven beers just today. <laughs> you could. The yard house. Yeah, where they have the yeah. yard long beer glasses. I didn't say it like that, did I? No. You I wish. You, I wish you had. <laughs> I wish you had. I'm not drunk yet. I got to work on my... You do get a little Boston-y. Not when you're drunk, just sometimes when you're tired or Tired, yeah, yeah, drunk, or sick, yeah. Sick, whatever. 
You sound wicked good. That's all I can say. Uh, thank you so much, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, once again for a great show all about Microsoft. Uh, you had my finger hovering over that button on the Carbon X1. Right on that button. That's, that's a good one. That's, that is a beautiful, beautiful machine. I came into this Screen show... Screen doesn't come off, though. I came into this show unhappy, disappointed with Windows 8. I came out of it, as always, once again bullish on the future of Microsoft. Wow. You guys that's are like good. That's like my, side, my really? side job is to occasionally <laughs> prop up Leo. You guys are good. <laughs> uh, we do this show every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC on twit.tv. Watch live. You can be part of the chat room fun. One of these days, I know Paul really wants to do it. We're going to take questions from the chat room. Let's say next week. We will definitely do it. We'll do it with Ayaz. Yeah, because he, yeah, he's better than me in every way. Aw. Not in every way, just in, <laughs> in the ways that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul is at the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com, where he posts frequently because he is a blogger, with all in caps. He is, micro, I am he is the secret, <laughs> secret Microsoft power blogger. blogger. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So is Mary Jo Foley for the all matter. caps thing. Secret yeah. power blogger. Mary Jo Foley at allaboutmicrosoft.com, part of the ZDNet family. Always a pleasure for, uh, I love to, I actually really enjoy doing this show, so thank you. Especially when uh, when I can get into SkyDrive, it just makes my day. We, <laughs> if you don't get to see it live, don't worry. Because we make audio and video available after the fact, on demand, at twit.tv and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, including that great Bringcast. A lot of people are using that Bringcast. They like the Bringcast. Bring it on. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Actually, I won't. I'll see you in two weeks. I, as actor, will be back next week with Windows Weekly. I just found out about the code name, Iguazu. Yes. It's the falls because it's connections and torrents of broadcast notifications. There you are. Connections and torrents? A broadcast. Yeah, like, you know, falls, falls, yeah. like torrents. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. Broadcast yeah. notifications. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I guess. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it. that's a ticket. <laughs> that's it.